Good morning. Good morning, y'all. One and all. Now we're just waiting on this to load. Waiting on this to load. Now we're gonna finish Evan. Uh, we want to match the smile for the cheeks. Uh, and that should be a quick update, relatively. Um, but I do need to confirm for myself which of the smiles it is. I believe I know which one it is, but just in case, double check before I make the changes. Also, my gun is getting a lot of downloads. I need to promo my stream better on my gun road. I'll do that right now, actually. Let's see what it looks like. Gun road. All right, here's Evans. This is the character we made uh, over the last two weeks or so, two and a half weeks. And uh, he's animated. Let me get him. All right. Okay. Isolate him. But he's looking really good. Just slow. Lagging. Lagging wagon. There we go. Um, but yeah, so we've got all these different facial expressions for the face tracking. Um, there's even a lot of tongue animations. Sus. <laughs> Their chat face tracking requirements. Extreme tongue animations. <laughs> uh, but we want to find the mouth stretch left and right. I believe that's the one we want to target because this is the smile one and we let the smile be a little bit next day. So that's 1160 and then we'll compare it to our actual smile in 270. Okay, so 270. So basically, we're just going to take these. We're just going to take it. We're just going to take it. It's mine now. So we go into the animation. We'll just copy all of these. Let me make sure I have both layers enabled. Yeah, I do. Everything but the eyes. I don't need the teeth. Not that they move, but all right, copy that. Actually, no, copy one half. And then we'll go to 1160. Is that mouth stretched down? 1160. Maybe it's the mouth corner pull, 1100. Yeah. So we'll paste. And paste. Inverted. Oh, no. uh, paste inverted on the next one. 1100. Mouth corner pull right, mouth corner pull left. Paste invert or flip. It looks a little bit better, but I'm still unsure. Uh, fine. Now let's 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 review in here. Because I want to see what is actually animating to understand. So first check on thing. Live link, face tracking here. 
Comment over here. Play. Tools, enable the emulator, uh, turn on OSC. Bam. Okay, perfect. And we're in. So I should be able to click body and see which ones are moving. So. This one just doesn't seem to be moving at all. So mouth. Cheek squints moving. Nose sneers are the set value. Hello, Donna J Extreme. Welcome. We're working on face tracking right now. Welcome back. And my day's going well. Thank you for asking. Early, early in the day, so we have yet to see. Mouth corner pull's not actually moving. Interesting. So mouth stretch right will move a little bit. Doesn't seem to move that far though. Mouth corner pull right. Okay. Adish, welcome. Hello, welcome back. What is the time in my country right now? It is eight ten a.m. So very early. Well, start of the day. Not super early, but. I just feel like these should be getting activated more. So let's look at our uh, Steph. We want to look at the Steph. <laughs> what do we want to look at? We want to look at the template animations that are being used by our UE prefab, which is right here. And we can click here for face tracking. Okay, so now we're in the animator. Mouth stretch left and right does work. Interesting. It's not as oh, oh oh interesting. Just the parameter. We need to be looking at the blend shape driver. Well, it looks looking amazing. Thank you, Adis. Welcome. Welcome and thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm very pleased with how I can't count. My country, I am in the USA. I'm in Texas. Um, grew up California, born in Washington State, so <laughs> I'm all over. Donna J. Extreme, by the way, I am from India. Well, welcome from India. What what part of India are you from? Mouth tightener is not the one. Mouth stretch one. Oh, here's my animation data. One hundred. So it should be getting set to one hundred. 
and it doesn't seem to be. <laughs> what did you use for the facial motion? I'm actually using an iPhone. Uh, I think it's iPhone 11 extra, extra charge. Um, and then uh, Unreal Engine has a something called Live Link Face. So it's a, some, a free app from Unreal Engine. And then uh, there's this program you run it, feed it into right here. Um, but you just use the Unreal Engine app and you're pretty much good to go. Pretty much good to go. Um, I mean, there's a lot to setting this up. I made a whole series of animations. New Billy. Okay, awesome. New Billy. Not quite. Yeah. Mine doesn't know where that would be on the map, so I'll look. Oh, wow. Well. Okay, so up north. You can see the Himalayas. Maybe. I would assume you could see the Himalayas. Hello, gamer. <laughs> welcome. Hello, brother. Welcome, welcome. And Adyash, welcome back. Hello. Welcome back to both of you. We're uh, going over how I set up facial animation for this guy. We have a little more tweaking to do. Um, just one, one tweak, really. Just trying to find. Down the corner and why it's so bad. <laughs> North, left. Right. Okay, that's fine. Mouth smile. Okay, maybe I missed adding a mouth smile. Look, I have a feeling that's what's going on. So I'm actually going to undo all the work I've done this morning with the face. And we need to make a mouth smile. Because so I have mouth stretch, this and that, blah, blah, blah. They don't have a mouth smile. And that's what should be getting animated. Let me look at that list that guy sent me. You should visit India. It is fun. Um, I'd be down. I'd be down. I, I you know, that would definitely be a, a novel experience. Uh, I definitely want to visit a lot of the world at some point, but, uh, <laughs> so like subscribe and follow so I, <laughs> I can do digital nomad stuff. <laughs> Maybe I'll do an IRL blog, travel around. Can you suggest me a course for animation? Um, I don't have much experience following tutorials for animation. Um, so unfortunately I don't have anything to directly recommend that. Oh, uh, um, a lot of the animation I looked at, uh, am I animating the characters in a sense? Uh, so I'm setting the character up so they can be animated in VR or puppeted. So this is a little different from animation because this is more like puppeting. Uh, like you put on the VR headset, you have your controllers and the character matches your movements. And then this client as well has an add-on, tracks their eyes and lips and mouth and stuff. So expressions that we'll be seeing in game are what the person's actually doing in real life. In real life. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have an animation course to recommend, um, unfortunately. I would just check out YouTube. I'm sure there's a few. My suggestion would be to just start with animation basics uh, because there's a lot of like subtle motions you can practice. Alternatively, just go crazy with it and figure out like, I want to make a man shoot a fireball. Like, just try it and see what happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. But a uh, blender, grease pencil is fun to animate in. You can also animate in Photoshop. Um, just like drawing frame by frame. Uh, what was I looking for? I'm looking for the Jerry. Uh, 
D conversion, conversion list, base track conversion. There we go. Okay. So mouth smile, I believe we missed that one. Mouth smile left and right. Because I have the front one. I don't have it though. I've seen it. Okay. Okay. So we need to make a mouth smile. Interesting. What am I making? Hello, Kartik Campbell. We are working on making the facial animation for this character right here. Um, did I retope with this character on live stream? If yes, I can probably learn from it. I did indeed. If you go to two or I think it was sometime two weeks ago, uh, but yes, so if you go through my videos, eventually you'll find uh, the one. Uh, Lots of love from India. Well, welcome. Lots of two Indian. Welcome, Kartik. Um, but yeah, so I do go over the retopology in my live stream. And I do discuss in that live stream why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, yeah. You want to make sure you find the one where I'm just retopology in the body. Because it's kind of spread out over a day or two. As I got the... Tried to figure out how to make all the fur properly. <laughs> Smile right. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has any in, uh, questions about what I'm doing, I'm just farting around. Um, we're making a, again, facial animation, which I'll show off in just a moment. Well, maybe I'll show it off right now since you guys are here. Um, is this character a game ready asset? Correct. So it's specifically being made for the game VR Chat. Uh, so this is client commission. Um, So someone hired me in order to make their character that they will use in the game to represent themselves. Um, there we go. Missions. Bam, bam. But yeah, so here's the kind of end result. You can see works pretty well. Ooh, ee, wow. But we need we we're missing a smile, as it turns out. And we have to get rid of the cheek puff. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's fun to mess around with. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you're not familiar with VR chat, it's a <clears throat> like a social platform like Roblox or um, Fortnite, um, Unreal Engine Fortnite. People can make their own stuff, upload it. People can play it, use it, etc. So what is your poly count for this character and which maps you're using for texture like 2K, 4K? Uh, all my textures are under two, are 2K. They are 2K. Um, and uh, the character is just under 70,000, which is the max amount that I use. Um, but yeah, he's got quite a few textures um, for each of material. But all together, it comes out to be. Hello, Lol Sky. Welcome. Three D modeling. Yeah, we're working on setting up the facial tracking for this character I made. Um, this is Minotaur Man. And yeah, so polygon sixty nine thousand nine hundred twenty six. He's got almost ninety megabytes worth of texture memory. Um, but in VR chat, he's ranked at medium performance, which is usually what I shoot for. Um, okay, so let's make this mouth smile here. 15 to 10. Let's 
15, 20. It's over, getting it out of here. I can delete these now. This stuff I saved. Don't need that anymore. Uh, but yeah, welcome, Lil Sky. Hope you're having a good day. Um, we spent the last like two and a half weeks making this character. Um, and I, what I usually do for any sort of shape keys or blend shapes and stuff like that is I'll create a. Uh, like a backup uh, animation to bring all that in together. And I can delete that one. Just go ahead and just make sure you paste it in. So now we've got that expression. That one. Okay, that should work. And I just want to make sure I spelled it correctly. Isn't 70K too much for VR? Yeah, it's okay for VR. I'm not sure though. Um, usually your, it really is it, the budget in video games is really hard to talk about because there's a lot of different things that contribute. So if your world is simple, then usually you can put more budget to characters. But I would say like a good rule of thumb is like you have a million vertices, um, that you can use for your character or for, for everything. Right. And then you just partition sections of that. Like I want my environment to be super detailed. So I'm going to use half that budget just for the environment. So there shouldn't be anything on screen for the environment that exceeds this amount. And you kind of like slice that pie thinner and thinner to for different things. And that's usually the best way to do it. Um, and these are not hair cards here. Um, these are, Tufts of fur. Um, so if I go here, we can turn on shaded wireframe so you can see. Pretty simple, nothing too crazy. I've baked a lot of the details, so it's not like over the top. Um, it's hooves and stuff. Nothing too dense. Of course, the teeth, teeth are a lot um, more detailed. But uh, yeah. It, there's a lot of trade-offs, but generally, uh, the my clients use their PC for uh, playing the game. So usually they have a stronger um, computer for this, for this kind of stuff. Fifteen ten and fifteen twenty ten twenty. Thank you, great skills. Thank you, Kartik. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, but you can actually make fur fur in VR using some of these shapes, where it actually looks like there's like strands of fur coming off, and it looks fluffy and stuff. Uh, that is also possible. Um, <clears throat> Um, but yeah, so just, just one more comparison for performance. So sometimes people play on, also my sound was off. So if anyone sent me notifications, I'm sorry if I missed them. Um, but, uh, if you're playing on just the headset, then you really are targeting like a mobile device, like, like your iPhone or something. Um, and, but if you're hooked up to your PC, then you can use a lot more, um, use a lot more. <laughs> and that, that being said, some people do really go overboard adding too much detail to the avatars. That is definitely a thing that happens. And uh, they're kind of usually referred to as power users. <laughs> right, mouth smile right. Did I spell that correctly? Mouth smile left. So that looks good. That's why I want to double check. And we want to look at that animation one more time. Um, 
down. Boom. Boom. Look at the direct lens shape driver tree. Mouth smile uses this one here. And it's mouth smile, right? Okay, okay so should be correct. Delete all blend shapes, shape keys. Remake all blend shapes. This little list that I have here on the left, right up, right up there, um, I basically made a little script so that each keyframe, each frame in an animation, it will save a shape key, um, which makes it very useful when you have a ton of shape keys <laughs> to just immediately bring them back into your character. Uh, some people want to do shape keys by hand every single time, and it is, uh, that's, that is madness to me. You ever heard the definition of insanity? <laughs> to me, that is the same thing. <laughs> All right, there we go. We made them. Let's just review the mouth smile. Go down. Okay, perfect. That looks great. So to scan, and now we export. But it takes one million years because we have so much stuff in our character. Um, yeah, India is huge. I was looking at this. Um, I believe uh, Dinesh, Din Donna J said that they were from New Delhi. It's hard to wrap my mind around how big India is. So I kind of always, I kind of only think of it like this section, like, oh yeah, India, but it goes way up, way up there. Where's, uh, where's Mount Everest? Nepal, right? Just, <laughs> I could shit, but I'm feeling determined to look through it on them. We're waiting on Blender to load, so I'm just kind of goofing around. Or uh, we're waiting on Blender to export here, so I'm just going to look at this map. Is shape key different from timeline and how we use shape keys? So shape keys are like deformations that you can save into your model. So like uh, if I go here, we look at our character. Um, we have all these shape keys saved into that. And you can save things like expressions, like that angry. I don't know. In VR chat, we mostly use them for expressions. Shock. Um, but instead of animating the bones to do this, it's just a like a saved deformation of that mesh. So uh, that way you can access it later to do specific things. Uh, like stand the tongue up, that one set up. Shock. Confusion. Sad, etc. So those all contribute. Uh, to the character, um, but it's not, it's something you can animate, um, but uh, it's not necessarily an animation. It's, it's, it's more of a part of the geometry, part of the mesh of the character. Oh, oh yeah, pop it back. Um, but they are kind of expensive. Okay, there we go. We exported. Boom. We should have those new mouth smiles. Perfect. So let's test. Oh, 
All right, and then we can turn on our emulator. So many things to click all the time. Turn on the emulator. Turn on the face tracking. Then I can go here. That's a lot hornier than it looked from the thumbnail. <laughs> You know, people, people know what they want to look like in VR. Ow. Yeah. And should load in just a moment. Can I close this? There we go. Okay, now it's catching up. All right. Ooh. There we go. Much, much smilier. Oh, I forgot to get rid of the... Ooh. 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 <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, that smile looks way better. Hey. Ooh. Try to smile with just one. Can't stay long. Just wanted to say hi. Hello, Diggy. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I want to learn rigging and animation in Blender. Any advice? I do have a tutorial going over how I rig characters. It doesn't go over animation, but I do have a, a video um, tutorial going over how I rig characters in Blender. So I definitely would recommend checking that out. Let me go ahead, go to my videos. I'll grab that link for you. Right here. And bang. so that one goes over rigging, but I don't have a, any tutorials going over animation. Um, okay, so we still have a little bit more to do here in Blender because I forgot I don't want to include the this thing. I need to do that. I forget what that's called. Cheek puff seven four. And we'll just hit record. And set it. So seven forty. Then seven sixty. Okay. Seven forty and seven fifty. Should all be reset there. Is this a commission then? I'd love to see some of your non commission work. If you'd be cool to show me. Most of my work is commissions at this moment. Um, I can share my uh, art station if you'd like to check that out. Uh, I did quite a bit of work over the last few years, so a lot of avatars, obviously. Um, this is kind of more similar to my style. So this, this is a character that I made. Stylistic, a little simpler in terms of tune shading. Um, and then I've done some fan art, with, uh, some critical role characters, made a zombie, uh, and then I have a bunch of paintings and stuff in here as well, which I'll share. Actually, I'll share them. Let me go there. Bam. Doop. And paste. There we go. I'll just paste that there. Okay, and then we have one more mouth open. I want to make that's on the basic tongue. I know it's 320. To triangulate because it's so slow. Oh, that's really cool. Love your art style. Thank you. I'm a digital artist, but I've been thinking about giving Blender a shot. I love Blender. I did a painting, drawing, I still do quite a bit of it, but I have found that when it comes to learning, I 
feel like with Blender, everything I learn in Blender truly makes me more able to make art. <laughs> um, which I can't always say is the case with drawing and painting, at least personally, um, because uh, it just doesn't quite work that way. Um, because a lot of times like drawing and painting feels more like a performance where it's with Blender, you can really just engineer whatever result you want. You know, you can really just get in and, and like make, be very specific about what you're doing, error, error, error. <laughs> about what you're doing. Um, yeah, ignore this expression, y'all. I have to make it, but. That should work. Oh, and I have to make sure I do use rotation scale for everything. And then reset. Perfect. But anyway, um, yeah, I think uh, if you haven't, check it out. Even if you just use traditional art, like just knowing how to make a little diorama, like you could do some designs, put them in a 3D space, and make like a little diorama or something. Then you can do a camera. And it's like, oh, that, <laughs> like it just works out really nicely. I just recently sold my soul and removed my banner for a commission, so I know the feel Lamo. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I I just want you guys to ignore. It. I don't mind, particularly mind making it. <laughs> I'm very neutral on uh, furry versus non furry art. <laughs> I would say after making well over a hundred avatars. 99% of them being furry that I just, I'm part of the club. I'm part of the club. <laughs> Furries have been very good to me. I don't bite the hand that feeds me. I mean, they're not hurting anyone, and they single-handedly keep a lot of artists alive, so gotta respect that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, am I exporting? Darn, I needed to read the shape keys. Oh, it's gonna take a while. Darn. Okay, well, we're just waiting on Blender to load, so excuse me while I fart around. I was looking at a deli. New deli here. Actually, we can look at my... I do have a Gumroad, which is linked over there. Y'all are interested in downloading some of my work. Uh, a lot of it's a lot of it's free. And I wanted to adjust some of the um, so I have this like moon moon sickle one, which is cool. It's like a blade you can download and use. Um, it glows. Very proud of that one. That's fun. But I wanted to include in this when people check out even if they don't check out if i copy this bold underlined oh it is i guess i do have it there no oh, i was going to promote promo my which page a little bit more, but it's okay. Or my stream. Nimit Gamer, hi, I am back. Welcome back, Nimit. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. And uh, we're working on our Minotaur boy right here. We're making him move and jingle jangle and dance and stuff. <laughs> um, well, I wish you well, Milo. Definitely let me know, Milo Style, if you have any questions regarding getting into commissions and stuff. I'd love to share what I know. Um, VR chat is a fantastic place to get work. I remember your name. I can't say I remember what we talked about, but welcome back, Nimit. Um, <laughs> Nimit sounds familiar. Um, yeah, Milo, I've, I've been doing commissions now for about like 10 years. 
So it's been my, my bread and butter. Um, initially did like drawing commissions and things like that. Uh, we're just waiting on this to load. And the coffee is flowing through my veins now. So I gotta dance. I gotta dance. <laughs> uh... hmm. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be a little daring and do another cup of coffee after this. Could be a mistake, but I'm feeling it today. Feeling it. Do 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 do. Ba 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 ba. Ba na na ba na na ba. All right, sorry everyone. We're just waiting on this to export, and then we have to change it and re-export again. It takes forever to export now because it's got um, we have the mesh. And then all these little shape keys that go into it. And for each shape key, it has to save all this information. So it just gets exponentially longer uh, to export. I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking, Nimit. I hope you're doing well as well. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we're doing really good. Uh, things have been going well. We're finishing up a lot of cool avatars right now. We have this mech dragon that we're working on um, uh, in the afternoon. And uh, we start in a new avatar soon. First, we have to convert this guy into a quest version, though. Uh, all right, so let's delete all our shape keys and remake them. Have I rigged it? Yes. So uh, it's all rigged. Um, the face is rigged, the body's rigged, the tail. Uh, we've got physics in. Uh, in Unity, so like you can move and the uh, hair jiggles, the ears move around and stuff. Um, so it's all quite uh, satisfying, to be honest. But the more we add, the slower it is to work with. Milo. Oh, I, it's so weird. Oh, never mind. There we go. Sorry, never mind. I, I looked at it kick again, and I thought it had, I had missed a bunch of your messages. Um, yeah, I'll show off the rig in just a moment. I use an add-on called AutoRig Pro. Fantastic add-on. Um, need to get an affiliate link for that set up because <laughs> um, I recommend it all the time. But uh, great tool. Fantastic tool because it just sets up all the things I use regularly and it standardizes how I make avatars. So I can share a lot of data between the avatars. Like I work on this list of animations here, save the animations into a clip, and then I can take that clip, put it into my next avatar, and I can just take all this work that I'm making and move it with me down the line, which I, I you know, Milo, you asked about Blender. It's like, that is one of the coolest parts about Blender. It's like, when you make something, you can take that work with you. That feels good. Why don't you use Rigify? Rigify feels very messy to me. Um, and uh, AutoRig Pro here has some really good export features. So if I go to uh, exporting here, and actually, let me show you the rig. We got the rig here. Um, a little slow because I have the triangular modifier. But yeah, so got the character, we can move him, all his legs and stuff. Very fun stuff. Uh, but he's basically ready to animate. Oh, balls. I have to redo the shape keys again. I think. Let me check. Oh, no. Okay. We're good. Yes. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I wish I had use cases for VRC model. I think that, have you, are you familiar with the term digital production? And we got to go look forward to your next one. Sounds good, Dickie. I'll catch you later. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, but yeah, uh, Auto, AutoRig Pro just has some nicer features. It's updated more often. And uh, it just feels really good to me. Because you can do stuff like this. Great custom bones. It's got a nice tail and wings set up. You can do a bunch of cool stuff quite easily. I actually just shared 
this YouTube link right here. Um, uh, how do I copy that easily? Copy and there you go. Uh, so I pasted that in chat. That is a link to how I, I did the weight painting. Not about the character, but basically the same process. Certified bowl moment. Hello, Funkadeus. Welcome to the stream. We are working indeed on, well, not a bowl. He's a guitar. Um, and we're making his face tracking. So I'll be able to use my iPhone in just a moment and control his facial tracking. So we need to test it again. And, but it takes quite a while to export. So prepare your butts for a loading screen. It does take a while to export. And this should be the last export we do, but we can work on his ears in the meantime, because we should be able to move his ears. Maybe. It's really interesting. Is that natively a feature of Blender or is it another program? Um, so we bring everything into Unity and then it's in Unity that we do the face tracking because uh, this character is a commission that we're making a VR chat avatar for. So that's a lot of different information, but this we're making a game character that someone's going to use. Um, it is commission work, correct. I'm almost always working on commissions here. This, this is my full time a job making making avatars um which is fun <laughs> it's a little crazy sometimes but everything's crazy in the land of vr and stuff hmm. they are not interactable and so i can grab these these strands but i can't grab the ear collision allow collision But yeah, if you have any questions about the process or anything, feel free to ask. Um, uh, I love I love doing this work and I love sharing what I do. I'm hoping to make a. Um, I still can't grab them. Ah, uh, that's what it is. Allow collision. We turned on but we want these to be set to true. Where do I go to get works from it? So if um, you guys are looking for work, you could just straight up go into VRChat, the game, and walk around and talk to people. If you have a portfolio and people know you're legit, that's why I stream, so people know that I'm a real human. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, I think that's very important to you know be able to prove that you're a real human and not scamming people and all that jazz um so definitely do so uh but you can go into vr chat talk to people and i think platforms roblox fortnite vr chat all these platforms are going to get a lot bigger as time goes on and that they are a big source of work vr chat especially um, there's also discords that you can find work on so there's one called the VR Chat Traders Discord. I'll just type that in because you can search it. VR Chat Traders Discord. Posted that in chat. And uh, there is a ton of people looking for work all the time. That being said, there's a balance between it being overly competitive and, uh, I mean, if you haven't done commission work, you you're always juggling, like, especially when starting out. How much can I actually afford to work? My biggest advice for any artist looking to do commissions is if you the work you're putting into commissions isn't worth minimum wage or is less than minimum wage wherever you are, you probably want to just get a part-time job and work on your commissions on the side. And we're trying to get the furry commission communities attention for commissions, IDK, how to start. You want to go to, well, VRChat's a big one, uh, huge furry community there. Um, 
still waiting on Blender to load here. Then there's a uh, Fur Affinity is a website kind of like DeviantArt for uh, furries. Uh, definitely be aware there's not safe work content on there. <laughs> so if if uh, you're under 18, don't take that advice. <laughs> just a digital artist and I don't know Blender. That's fine. The for Affinity, there's tons of just like uh, traditional art, drawing, painting, etc. Not safe work is my main thing. Well, perfect. Then you'll you're definitely heading the right direction. Then <laughs> uh, there's a there's a big big community for it there. You know, of course, there's other people that get commissions that are not related to uh, um, not safe work art. All right, let's give this a shot one more time. But yeah, uh, really though, um, the the difficulty with art is differentiating yourself from your competition and you know i i think i love artists i encourage artists to work but it is good to understand that you are competing for people's money <laughs> um most helpful stream award how do i nominate this man oh thank you <laughs> i'm happy to share because i wish i had had people to tell me this stuff when i was getting into it <laughs> um Gotta go for dinner. See you sometime. Sounds good, Nimit. Enjoy your day. Thanks for coming by again. We'll catch you later. Um, all right, let me just turn on the character. Face tracking. Bada boom. <laughs> uh, all right, that smile looks so much better. Ooh. Nice. All right. I think we're good. And the ears are fixed, so that should be the final edit for our PC version of the avatar. Um, but yeah, just make sure that if you want to do art as a career, that you are supporting yourself through that. And sometimes that means not doing commissions if you're not able to make the correct amount of money to support yourself from those commissions. Um, I just don't want to give people advice to like jump straight into it. Certainly it will take, it is a risk. You know, you're you got to work hard. You got to grind for it. Um, <laughs> I think all those things without saying, but I, I do just have to say them to provide some, some contrast. Um, but compared to when I was first getting into it, if you look into, <laughs> yeah, he's got a big, big Snuggie. Uh, if you look into platforms, VR chat, Roblox kinds of things. They're very much stimulating people's desire for like original content. Um, you know, even like DeviantArt, I, I would say that the old communities, old communities, they now feel in contrast to VR chat, Roblox, all the social games, social platforms. I think it's a great way to promote yourself. You can make little drawings, bring them into the game and show people directly um it will probably be the future of a lot of freelance <laughs> man okay, and then we're going to make a duplicate which will be evan horn quest So we finished this version, and now we're going to make a quest version of the avatar. My main worry is that all the advice I've gotten is outdated, and I'm too late to the party, or it won't be as lucrative as it used to be. Um, the nature of what it is has changed a lot. Even myself, it's like you, you kind. Of, I, it's always possible. Just look at it this way. Think of it as a following. If you put it in the context of like kind of a content creator, I'm not saying you have to approach it like, oh, I'm going to be the next TikTok star or whatever. But if you do look at the what social media is and understand that a following is really what helps you build uh, a career out of this um, and how to get awareness on the things you do, then I think you'll be fine. And you'll see that there are plenty, there's plenty of opportunities. But it is a lot about nowadays, it's less about like, I'll make the perfect piece of art and more like making sure you have a very consistent amount of people knowing you exist, seeing your work and consuming your work. And all of that is just 
you can you could boil it down to a numbers game, but that might take the soul out of what you enjoy doing. But it is a good perspective to understand how to become stable with it. Um, interesting. My dude, I'll remember you when I'm on my private jet. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, we'll do our private jets in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> concealed and gingy hello welcome Con concealed and gingy hello well thank you for the follow. welcome to the stream hello hello good to see someone making avenues we just finished the face tracking for our uh, our boy here um and uh feeling very happy with them uh when you start making Abby's, hello, Sky. Good morning. Welcome to the stream. Did you start by doing commission for cheaper or just avatars for yourself and friend? Um, when I first started getting into commissions in general, before avatars, good morning, Arctic. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I was doing art commissions, and I absolutely did them for cheaper just to get the work. Uh, so a lot of the advice I'm giving where it's like, oh, make sure you have a job beforehand, this and that, I feel is a little hard earned to have that perspective because I really set myself up for a lot of difficulty by not doing it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, those, there were some very challenging moments over the years of uh, going just like, wow, how the heck am I going to? afford rent this week or food <laughs> um so it there's a lot of challenges with this kind of work uh i'm gonna separate the body really quick we're making the quest version now so uh this is my process for making quest versions fallback versions let me know if you have any questions on the process um, but then, and for VR chat specifically, it did just start by making stuff for myself, um, because I didn't know enough blender at first, didn't understand, um, making, buying base avatars for like a humanoid base or whatever kind of base you're targeting does help, does help quite a bit. Um, I think you, maybe your gut instinct might be like, no, I don't want to use other people's work. Don't be afraid of using other people's work. <laughs> That's why they they set it out there. And uh, you want to be able to provide. You want to be able to know you have a good starting point. Um, so yeah, you can definitely just give yourself a nice foothold into it. That link that was just posted, I saw the asset on an Avi just today. Well, oh, that's cool. That makes me feel really happy. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that really makes me happy. <laughs> Moment of truth, does the Minotaur secretly have a fully rigged dawn? Uh, this one. <laughs> Ahoy, good morning, Aaron. Welcome. Half of my Avi makers and VRC just copy and improve. And I do think there is value in that. Uh, a lot of times in the art industry or people are like, oh, imitation is bad. I don't really agree with that. I think uh, there's a lot of value in studying things to know how you can do it for yourself. A lot of value in that. But also, good morning, Aaron. Hello, hello. How is I'm doing well? We're uh, just finishing up our Minotaur, or we did just finish him up. We got his face tracking working. He's smiling now. Ears can be touched. And now we're making the quest version of this Abbey. The quest version. And uh, basically just dissolve the heck out of things. That's my <laughs> that's my game plan in the quest versions. Because it's I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> imitation is where there's so much free space and interpretation on VRC. It's true. I'm sitting here editing Abby's for a friend. I'm jealous about making Abby's. Okay, well, editing's going to be your your uh, entry into this. Um, so definitely take consolation and the understanding that you're heading the right direction. Bye. 
started out tracing and modifying work that I like to figure out how to draw it. I, I started out tracing dinosaurs. That was my very first project. I see you doing better here. Go out, sleep, feel better, less shitty mood. Made a proposal doc for another TTP, TT game. I might toss out and run a stream game. Heck yeah. I like that. Get that grind going. Um, boom. Uh, I started out tracing. Figure out how to draw it. I didn't post, but it was a really valuable learning process. I think imitating putting your own spin on existing art is a valid part of a creator's journey. Absolutely. Imitation is fundamental to learning. Like, you can't learn without it. Face tracking looks so smooth, OMG. I could see that in movies. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> if you want to read it, I can send you, but you seem fairly busy. I will probably take a look at it later. If you want to Discord it to me or uh, put it in the Discord for other people to check out as well. Get hyped for it. Um, Era here does really fun D and D games on stream, and uh, sounds like he's getting ready for another one. Getting ready for another one. Now I want an animated movie starring VR chat avatars. I think a, a big part of VR moving forward is to be people making movies and stuff like that, all in VR. Um, I would love to see that, and I do think it will happen. Haven't fully committed, so I will send it to you. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, excuse me. Sorry to burp. Love that. Right now we're going in and just making a very simple version of the avatar, because that will allow us to create a quest fault. And we're just we're just being a way heavy handed with dissolving. It's the only consistent way I've found to really just get it, get it to work. I wish I could keep more of the shoulder. How long I've been working in Blender? I would say full time, it's about five years, four to five years now. And there's a spot in the Discord I could show a little bit of the edits I'm trying. There is, there's a um, uh, self promotion channel um, or Blender channel. They kind of overlap a little, so <laughs> just kind of how it goes. Do you, are you in the Discord? I can share that if you're. If, there's also an uh, exclamation point Discord, we'll bring it up. All right, that's probably as much of the shoulder I can keep. Yeah, you know, the community. Hello. <laughs> Bada boom. And then, all right, we'll do some of these loops. And this is why I set up my topology these ways. Look at that. How cool that is. Just goes all the way over. That one's a little goofy, but we'll do it. Converting this Abbey to Quest is going to suck. It's always a bit painful. It's always a bit painful, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I just got to buckle down. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm a uh, very familiar with the process, so it be, won't be terrible, but uh, it is always a chunk of work. I make a 3D web comment just using Honey Select 2 models, and I've wanted to learn Blender. Nice, that's really cool. As the comics got more popular, the limitations of the built-in studio are popped up. Well, that is very cool. That's very cool. That's a great way to get started. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Blender's going to be fantastic for you. I think, uh, you know, there's, it's always a learning curve, but if you're already make, have following and stuff, I mean, that's one big challenge already out of the way. And then you can just take your time learning Blender. Uh, 
All right, let's look at the face here. I don't want to delete as much on the face because it'd be nice to retain some of the uh, movement. Oops. I will have to delete most of it, dissolve most of it. And this gets dissolved, and that gets dissolved. I may make a fault. It's PC only with no quests. For, uh, Oh, so you're talking about your Abby. My apologies. I thought you were talking about mine. To no quest files, but I do have somewhat the knowledge to convert and trim down useless stuff. Well, this is my what I'm doing right now. So certainly feel free to riff off of how I'm doing it. Because uh, this is what I would recommend to anyone looking to simplify their avatar. Very important thing to learn. Going to delete that there. Well, mm -hmm. we'll dissolve. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. <laughs> I sent a pic in the Blender channel. I wouldn't call it much of a fall. I only got 30 falls. Haha. I feel like this is like a lot to me, but it's nothing wild. I mean, that's that's a, that's a start. You get your little your little ember and you just need to blow some flame on it to keep it growing. Hey, that's awesome. Here's Funkadeus, or sorry, uh, Concealed and Gingy uh, Avatar. Very cool. Why is he in a kitchen? <laughs> I love the wrinkles here. That looks dope. Hello, Hanma. Good morning. My favorite thing to make are actually little animatic sequences to music. It's a lot of fun. Good. Um, yeah, someone was asking about getting started in animation earlier. That's such a great way to do it. You know, people shit on TikTok a lot, but the uh, teaching, it's really taught a lot of people how to make animations and videos and stuff. It's like, that's just pretty invaluable. I think uh I think it's underhyped. <laughs> Sam, are we ERP and watching SpongeBob later or nah? Only if you do the Squidward voice. <laughs> Last splash screen that was added is that so I'm stuck with it. <laughs> But it adds great lighting to the middle, and that's when I add them. It does. I usually use a little uh, background stuff to get my get my start. The Squidward voice. Canon Squidward or Glorb Squidward. For the Glorb! Let's actually see. What are we at right now? Oh, yeah. 56,000 still. All right. Still got a lot more to go. So I'll just keep whittling it down. <laughs> I use other people assets. I'm very lazy. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of a lot of other creators want you to use their assets, and they have little licenses and stuff uh, for using your work and selling their the assets you make, or the the kit bashes you make. Licenses. It's a very collaborative model, though, which I, I think is pretty cool. I think that's neat. I think that's neat.
let's be honest, licenses are merely guidelines. Guidelines. Depends on what you mean by that. <laughs> Do 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 these ones yeah. easily broken rules. And my first ever comic was entirely using free assets and I had a huge list of all the credits, but it got lost when I switched laptops. I felt so guilty using all the assets without being able to credit <laughs> that I had to end the comic low. <laughs> And dissolve that one, and dissolve that, and then dissolve all these. And dissolve that too. Hand. Very simple hand. Four, four, nice. All right, and then we can dissolve a lot in here. Not much, actually. Not much in there. I could probably collapse some edges, though. Yeah, let's leave that for now. Let's look on the fluff. You should give him a brain, like a internal brain. Organ of some sort. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Uh, we'll, take, we'll just separate just these two. And we're going to hit him with the decimate. Light, I first sensei. I gotta go whip up some vile smut. <laughs> I'll catch you the next time. Sounds good, fucking Deus. Thanks for hanging out. Good luck with your smut, and uh, we'll catch you later. <laughs> I do want to make an avatar with like a bunch of internal organs. I think that'd be cool. I think you could like pull them out. <laughs> Actually, you can make a whole game about that. Well, then they're still mirrored. Still need to mirror them. Um, with the body, mirror them as well. Okay, that adds up quick. My eyeball. Do an avi that is ripped open, most from the belly. That way you can save some polys, lol. <laughs> it's all about the poly kit. Set this back down to 0.1 on that decimate. Yeah. All right. So I'll take these two, hide them. Hoof. We'll delete. Separate. Bada boom. And this one, I think, is just a subdivision. So we can actually hit it with the multi res and unsubdivide a few times. And apply. I have a few friends who want me to edit and or and or upload abbeys for them, but they are mad I want won't upload ripped abbeys. Well. Good for you on staying strong. It's pretty important that we have try to create a good ecosystem because that's what's going to help grow the whole the whole enchilada. Hmm. 
That's what it's all about. What's that? What are these here? Let's do them. Wash. Don't ask them for much, but I do ask that they are not ripped. Good. Good. It, you know, it's it's tough because there's a lot of people whose like intro to this kind of work is through like ripping avatars and stuff. It's like I can't really hold it against someone who's young, but I can hold it against someone who like who just learns of it doesn't understand at first i do hold against people who are told why it's wrong <laughs> and still continue to do it let's focus on the horns This one also is I res unsubdivided. It's a little too much. I think we'll get one layer up. How much is that though? Oh, that's not much at all. Okay. <laughs> I would say that like the first five abbeys that they start with are ripped to me. That's okay, learn and do what you want, but then I say it's bad. The abbeys I've seen that are bugged and not fixed are in bad shape. <laughs> Certainly, I think it depends on where you get them because a lot of rippers don't actually quite understand how to optimize things. So you do end up with a lot of bad avatars. <laughs> We'll have to do that. We'll have, have to do. Dissolving the tea salt. teeth always feels so sad. Teeth for you. So far, my favorite ad maker at the moment is Saturnus. Makes a great work. I don't know if I'm familiar with them. But then again, I'm kind of in my own little bubble. Uh. <laughs> I need to interact with other creators a little more. <laughs> uh, maybe that would be a good thing. You know what? I think I'll leave the front four teeth alone. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. Silver baby wolves. Do you ever just giggle when you see the face like that? Oh, absolutely. My favorite. Uh, I'm going to go back to my other one to recreate it because it's very funny. Was a. <laughs> do I ever do collabs? Uh, I've been working on a collab with uh, Lindy. Um, if you are familiar with Lindy, I did this the other day and it made me laugh. <laughs> Wait, let's see. This, <laughs> this one really got me. <laughs> it's just so, he looks cute. He's like a little fluff monster. Uh, <laughs> I sent a Gumroad link in DMs if you want to look at them. You're welcome to send it on Discord. Do I ever do collabs? Yes, I'm working with Lindy to make a veil, which will be a pyromancer avatar. So look forward to that. We'll be releasing them probably next month. Um, 
seeing how time timing is working and everything. Um, probably towards the start of next month. And I do have a few other avatars I'll be releasing myself um, sometime soon ish, maybe, <laughs> hopefully. Um, Cookie Monster, yeah, it does have Cookie Monster vibes. Okay, I think we just gotta go a little ham here and uh, just go ham. Get rid of all these little verts up top. Sent a good sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll check that out a little later. Oh, the dissolve to go up this side. Interesting. Fashion 18. One, two, three. So, I mean, if it keeps the point, then it will dissolve. Boom, boom, boom. Sorry, getting a little dissolve heavy here. Way back. I love your Abby so far. Thank you, thank you. This is a client commission for um, Ebonhorn. Um, we're working on his Minotaur Abby Sonan. Abby Sonan? Sonan Abby? Same thing in this case. Beautiful. Beautiful. Still too much on the side, though. Let me just hide the top row. Boom, boom. boom. But then I'll show you guys my next secret for doing quest avatars, which is rebaking your maps so you can get. Perfect. Perfection. Perfection. Do I dissolve this end here? Mm, no, we won't. dissolve it but it does leave a lot of triangulation open maybe there's a better way at least the gums I don't want to go that far up though do I just collapse these instead dissolve these hey, collapse Let's see what that looks like on the texture. Oh, that's not bad. All right, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Bada boom. Actually, I should be able to make an action. New action. Dissolve. Head ring. Cord. Select. Loops. Rings. X. Dissolve. Or no, not dissolve. So. I may buy a few Abbeys or a few of the same Abbey, make a bunch of different ones, just do different colors and style. Not a bad way to go. It's so interesting to watch someone that is new to model things in Blender. 
Hello, oh, welcome Silver Baby Wolves to the Twitch side of things. Hello. As someone who's just new to just model and things in Blender, it's only recently about last November I learned how to kit bash and that blew my mind. Well, good. It should be exciting and it should be fun. Uh, and you know that, again, there's just not many communities I've seen, I think I crashed Blender, um, <laughs> that uh, really promote such creative thinking, you wanting to make things all the time. It's really cool to see. Okay, we did lose some work, but not too much. Um, take the teeth, pop those off. Now we're gonna make this a little bit simpler on ourselves than last time. Just by deleting half of this. Then we're going. Then we're going in. Okay, that does not work as I want it to. Boom. I also feel like a lot of things are gate kept and that also sucks. It's a bit of both. There is just a lot to learn for this kind of stuff. Like it's, I think it's a little more than people realize at first just how much does go into this kind of stuff. But certainly there are people who go out of their way to not share what they know. <laughs> like that's that's just the thing that happens. People are like, oh, it's my secret recipe. No one can know how the, <laughs> how the Krabby Patty is made. It's like, well, you know, you have a good idea. Uh, and plus it's like, you can always, just recon a lot of times you can look at avatars people have made and just reconstruct how it was done. So we're gonna make this call this let's see. Dissolve edge edges. So record, select, um select loops, edge rings, and collapse. Yeah, stop. That is what we want to do. Oh, is it going to freeze again? All right, well, I guess I'm going to use the action recorder for right now. That's a bummer. I wonder if it's because I made a new file. I bet that's what it is. Because I moved into a different Blender file. <laughs> but you don't understand it much because as someone that's generally creative, I want to share so others can enjoy it. I think that it will make less and less sense as time goes on, just because the nature of art is going to only become more and more collaborative, and there's going to be a lot of benefits to that, uh, well, as, as well as a lot of problems, but I think that art will only become more in sympathetic though. <laughs> um, what the fudge? What is going on there? Point six S X zero. Why does it want to shoot that one way over there? Hmm. 
Interesting. Don't quite understand what's happening here. There's some sort of duplicate. There we go. Yeah, there's a duplicate here too. All right, beautiful. And then actually with all that dissolving, we can even dissolve these too. That is some simplified chompers. And they still look pretty good. Beautiful. The power of baking. How is it hanging, bud? <laughs> Small, shriveled and a little to the left. <laughs> Welcome, Rob Bipple. Welcome back. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't overly look that why I do this is to make mods for a private game server. See, private's not part of the main franchise, basically. A little bit of an odd community. I mean, those are great ways to learn. Uh, I, I know a lot of people who ended up you know, making a uh, getting dabbing vibes from that model, just saying. <laughs> I'll be sure to let the uh, client know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all about the power of learning when it comes to uh, this kind of stuff. You know, you want to find the right community. You want to find a community that's not going to abuse you either for your time and energy. Uh, so I'd keep that in mind, uh, Silver Baby Wolf, because one aspect that's going to be a little tough as time goes on is just knowing what is worth your time <laughs> and when people are taking advantage of that. So if you're doing a bunch of free work for people, be, be a little careful because they may not respect your time as much as you need them to. Pardon me for asking, but would you mind if I show you progress of a model I'm working on? Go right ahead. Uh, are you on my Discord? You can do exclamation point Discord if you want to uh, share it. There. Definitely, I do it for fun. But it's mostly for me and then generalization of other things for others. Gotcha. Gotcha. I guess we'll do every other edge here. Actually, let's just that counts out before I do finish that. And then here, we want that. Probably even. Well, let's just start here. Just start here. One, two. I made this simpler on myself, but I did not. And then here. Perfect. Eyeball. I'm not going to use the dilate. Oh, well, let's see. What's this look like? That's not that bad, actually. Nice. Beautiful eyeball. I said it's still in early stages at the moment. Let's take a quick look. Uh, I forgot to offer, but did you want to see the results uh, from Saturday's hat session there, Sam? Yeah, go right, go right ahead and share it. Saturnus. Let's say I'll send you a wave, Gingy. Hey, bunny. Here we go. Look at the bun bun. Currently working on model based to on Gumroad, just thought I'd share the progress so far. Very cool. Very cool. Is it going to be a mech or a robo uh, bunny?
or are you uh, in the sculpting stage still? I'm gonna actually hide these, I think. And now we're looking at just these ones. So these guys up here, I will simply separate these ones. Um, I think we delete half of them. Select side of active, invert, deleted, deleted. And we will hit it with the designate top and then a mirror right after that. And say point one. All right. Okay, so we have 4,000 to get under. <laughs> Rages at the X-Mere. <laughs> I could make a robot bunny now that you bring up the idea. I mean, it's looking good. I just wasn't sure if it, uh, my initial instinct, I did not sure. Not wasn't sure if it was separated to become like a hard surface thing or quite what. Ooh, here we go. Here's Era's uh, tattoo. Freaking dope. Love that mouth there. Close that. Bada boom. Very cool. Man, it must have been weird to get the tattoo on the elbow on, on your weenus. <laughs> I feel like it's just so thin. Very cool. That's awesome. I always loved uh, bands on fingers. I think that's really cool. Band the death. Bunny looking great so far. It is indeed. <laughs> fucking hurt. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like, that just seems like it's built to be the most painful part of that. <laughs> no way to avoid that not being incredibly painful. <laughs> I think what we'll do once again is separate all of these symmetrical ones. Only done this process like one million times for this fur. It's taken took a long time to make all this fur and hair and stuff. A long time, okay. Honestly, the finger hurt worse. Interesting, right in the little sensitive. Oh, Chip, welcome! Right in the little sensitive, gummy parts of your finger. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, Chip. Welcome to the stream. Welcome back. That's that little feeling I have in my hand. It hit certain parts, and it was bad. I feel bad for anyone who has all feeling in their hands. <laughs> huh. Maybe they started out the tattoo session with a bit more that they had at the end. Da, 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 da. I'll delete those and now we have just this one side which we will hit the mirror modifier put that up there then then we can now dissolve to our heart's content and this will be interesting because there's a lot to do they're basically just going to be little triangles Probably.
try to keep the ones that I feel will retain the shape the best. <clears throat> it's weird because I joined a stream today and they were talking about feet pics and now the stream is talking about PP tattoos. PP tattoos. What's our <laughs> talk about hands? <laughs> What's on your what's on your mind? <laughs> I didn't chip. <laughs> I hate having ginger face facial hair. Why ginger facial hair? My my hair comes in a very dark red. Or my facial hair comes in a very dark red. Which I've always found kind of funny. My Scottish roots or Irish roots coming in. Literally. Oops. Bam. Bam. Man, this is some optimization. <clears throat> Full blown ginger, so my facial hair is blonde and dark red. <laughs> well, I figure I heard something else then. <laughs> Well, my finger, the one on my hand, I would not talk about that. <laughs> I have light much at the moment. I need to shave. Yeah. I feel yeah. I always feel that, I always notice I need to shave the most when it starts affecting my sleep because I can't like lay at an angle that's like comfortable. Cause my facial hair like <laughs> annoys me. Looks like a bunch of worms. <laughs> Your cam is very dark, by the way. It's because I have or the the blinds are up. The blinds are up. For anyone new joining, we're working on making the quest version of our boy right here. So we're gonna be making the very optimized version. This is the full version. And right now we're making the low poly version right here. Also, good morning to everyone out there. Hope you're all having an amazing day. Welcome, welcome. If you have any questions, let me know. Because I love answering questions. <laughs> And there, there, edge loops and dissolve. Do you have a tutorial for baking? Not yet. That would be a good one to make though. Um, not quite yet. But I have done it in my live stream. So it should be up on one of my lives. Sam, would you say your avatars are quite optimized or not? I think relative to our chat, my avatars are optimized. Are, are quite optimized. Um, but that may not say as much as you think. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I would say yes. I do think that my avatars are optimized. <laughs> um, especially like today's hardware and stuff. Certainly this fallback avatar is pretty much as optimized as you can really get. Uh, usually I ask my clients like, oh, what type of uh, rating are you going for uh, and performance wise? Um, or I just shoot for a medium, medium performance. Because I think that's a, a good, uh, good place to be performance wise.
These ones don't have these dissolved. I do want to keep this, uh, whatever, we'll get rid of that. Whatever. And then edge loops and dissolve. But yeah, I think uh, last, the start of, or towards the end of last week, I started baking a Zin, the mech dragon. So that should be a good reference point. Um, you just have to go back in my lives to find it, but uh, that'd be a great resource. I don't really go into like describing everything I'm doing, but it would be a very practical one to watch. I mean, I describe a bit, a decent amount in there, now that I think about it. Right, time to sit down. Ooh. Question, how did you come across VR chat? We'll do all the way to see your next bake. <laughs> That'll probably be in uh, about a week, my next baking session. Uh, or maybe towards the end of this, this week. Uh, came across VR chat just because I was consuming a lot of VR news. I was very much... Uh, I got the um, the Vive right when it came out, so I was just just a very into VR as a concept as a whole, and then uh, it just became popular, and it was it was a cool platform for me to be able to make stuff and upload and look at it really quick, which I still think it's fantastic for. It's like oh man, I want to. What would this look like in VR? Or what would that look like in VR? And I just kind of kept going with that and <laughs> loving every second of it. And uh, it's like, oh, wow, well, I could. And I was, doing, I was usually doing like drawing or painting commissions at the time. Um, and then eventually I was like, well, I'm just, just going to keep on this. <laughs> uh, or I, I can just train. I People want avatars. And I. I made them for myself. Uh, I under, I had made uh, 3D models before, so I was, I was decently familiar with some of the stuff. Certainly not to the degree that I am now, but uh, comfortable enough to just start and run with it, which is sometimes all you need. Yeah, mostly just because I wanted to make stuff for myself. That's really what it boils down to. It's like I wanted to see what I could do and then uh, realize that there was a um, market for it. And I was talking to um, someone a bit earlier about how I think VR chat will just continue to get a lot bigger uh, or just the VR platforms, VR social platforms. Like if you're looking for work as a 3D character, artist and stuff, I think VRChat, Roblox, Fortnite and stuff will just continue to be bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see that changing. Just as more people get into it. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if anyone's been seeing all the vision pro stuff these last few weeks um that's been cool to see it's like 
some people dislike the Vision Pro, but I'm all for the public getting excited about a VR product. <laughs> Get more people into VR. See, when you make high poly avatar and texture and everything, uh, I if you were to then make a low poly one, do you have to retexture everything? Um, so what I'm gonna do is cheat by rebaking. There's a process just like baking uh, the high poly to low poly, you can bake textures you already have from uh, into a different map. So I'm gonna be combining all the different materials. Um, and thankfully, because I'm dissolving them, I'm still I still have my UVs for them, so they still should have. There's going to be some issues with them, but um, I still have the texture underneath this, so I'm not not throwing out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. <laughs> I still have my uh, maps in there. So, so to say, so to speak, so to speak makes sense. I don't think so. So to say. But then but there are still separate materials. I have a separate material for the fur, the body, and the eyes. And what we'll do is combine all those maps and rebake them into just one material, which will be the quest material. Oh, there's already been a fur that's made it so that they can play VR chat on the Vision Pro with index controllers. Like, what can't furries do at this point? Am I right? <laughs> furries are the future. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, Fruxus that makes Resonite. It's just interesting to see how. It it is funny to me that like a lot of times people equate like furries to. Uh, animistic like uh, stuff where like you know in our, in our past people really identified with like wolves and stuff or you had like a spirit animal or vision quest you'd find like an animal but it's, it's funny that that is now kind of at the very forefront of a lot of technology where we have a lot of people very involved in technology uh, that uh, are furries and kind of a revival of that in a way um, though someone made a joke, and I'm not saying this as a morbid joke, but just like if if uh if the planes going to a convention, furry convention, all crashed, then the uh, the IT departments across the world would uh would disappear, <laughs> which I always thought was funny. <laughs> Uh, not wrong, you know. Whistles in the corner. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> it's me. We're not just IT, we're also NASA scientists, research doctors, the person who's the main developer of the COVID vaccine is a furry. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Does anyone, has anyone heard of the idea of uplifting? I thought, I thought it was a new one for me. I've, I've seen it in media before with like Planet of the Apes, but I never really had given it much thought. Do you guys know what uplifting means? Well, I'll just say this. Not everyone's going to know, but basically you take it, uh, you give intelligence to an animal that's not quite as intelligent as humans. So like, you know, you make crows or super smart or something like that. 
And that's been, I've just been thinking about that a lot lately. Some people, there's a whole book series about someone who made dolphins hyper intelligent. <laughs> Uplifting depends on context. Absolutely. There are certainly will be wrong ways, would be wrong ways to do it. <laughs> but I do think genetic engine engineering is going to actually happen for pets a lot sooner than it'll be for humans. Like, I think you can already get a service to clone your dog or pet cat or whatever. So you're like, ah, oh, well, I really miss Bucky or whatever. And you're like, yeah, let's just get back. Uplifting some humans counts. <laughs> I'll take the free uplifting. <laughs> if only that's what the COVID vaccine actually was. Just making people hyper intelligent. <laughs> it would be unethical if you did make a smart vaccine or a, you know, a smart upgrade and you didn't give it to everyone that would be a little messed up what was that movie or show the one with bradley cooper He gets like smart from a pill. Man, if only that was how that worked, instead of just having it be like hard work. I do, uh, if, it, if anyone's ever read the book series, um, the Hyperion trilogy, super cool. Love that book series. I think it was, it was very, very interesting. Um, but they have this uh, concept, which is super interesting, where like, basically like human society and it's kind of split into two where there's like people who live on these planets connected by teleporters. And then there's another faction of humans that don't like using teleporters. So they've been traveling by starship and they've through some relativity magic, they're evolving or they, the, the amount of time that it took them to get from point A to point B was way more than the time, uh, for people to, uh, <laughs> um, um, they've just been around a lot longer even though they kind of exist in the same space but it was interesting because like the guy uh uh dan simmons i believe like had it be so that like when they actually encounter the people who've been in space like super long time they're actually like all furries basically <laughs> they've like a genetic and genetically engineered themselves a bunch and they're all like super super varied and it's like kind of a utopia in, in these little spaceships, um, which was super interesting. It's kind of a fun, it was a much more, it wasn't like a evil humans in space kind of deal. I don't know. I felt like it kind of inverted a trope uh, in an interesting way. <clears throat> like with nanobots, they get in your brain or something like Skeletor does in Herman. <laughs> yeah, He-Man, oh, gotcha. I was like, who's <laughs> By the power of grace. Anyway, I love speculative sci-fi. And if anyone has not seen The Expanse, you should go watch it. Because it's awesome. And I love it. And I want there to be another show. It is. <laughs> it's so good. So good. 
I love you, drummer. I love you, drummer. <laughs> Whew, this is taking a while, but we're getting there. there. Almost there. What's the other show you talk about, the one using portals? It's a book series called Hyperion um, by Dan Simmons. And uh, that is a bit of a spoiler that I did. I'm all sorry. It, it won't change your... Uh, uh, your experience reading the books, because there's a lot more to it than just that. It's a mild spoiler. Um, but very interesting book series, a little surreal. It's mostly about this creature called the Shrike that uh, is basically like a universal apocalypse kind of deal. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's very interesting. It does does a lot of interesting things, but there are a lot of beautiful movement in it. It is I! Welcome, Mr. Lonely. Hello. Hello. Oh, my fingers are so cold. My little fingies. But I would love to see... One of the things that I really enjoyed in The Expanse that they kind of went away from, uh, which disappointed me a little bit, was the, like... Um, different physiology of the people in the different aspects of space, because there's Earth, Mars, and then the Belters, um, which are the people who live on like asteroids or spaceships. Um, and they talked a lot at first about like how people live in space, like they're they're like growing longer limbs and stuff like that, because you know they they don't actually like have they don't experience gravity the same way anymore because they live purely in space anyway, it was it was very cool and i wish they had kind of played that up a little bit more uh, later in the series or throughout the series It's a minor critique. I mean, it certainly doesn't take away from how good the rest of the show is. <laughs> I only remember seeing it in season one. Exactly. Yeah. The, they really. I mean, the the whole the whole tone of the show does change because it basically got canceled initially at that point. So I think that they kind of. It like reinvented itself a few times with all the different cancellations and stuff. Um, and then they lost, uh, then they lost the actors because he was being a creep. <laughs> uh. Anyway, I could go on. Drama. Hey, Jester Era. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Good to see you. We'll be starting on uh, your commission most likely this afternoon. Uh, I was hoping to start on them yesterday, but we had a bit of work to do on some of these. Other. Abby's here. But this should be the last little chunk of work for our Minotaur. But hello. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a good one. I'm gonna go lurk, Sam. Have a good one. Sounds good, Era. We will catch you later.
Almost there. Phew. That was a lot of work. Take your time. I'm in no rush to have your start or finish the project. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate that. But I'm looking forward to jumping in and getting him started. It's my favorite part, sculpting. So I love jumping into that. Because that's what we started with. Okay. Right now we're making the quest version of uh, the Minotaur, Eben, Ebenhorn. There we go. Phew. Okay, so we got the side ones done. Still a lot. Still. So 4,000 on its own. Uh, okay, we still have quite a bit more to optimize, but these ones will go first. Right, so we'll do these ones, these little triangles first, or that X. should be enough once this is done because this one's quite a bit on its own. It'll be very close once we're finished. Not quite there. Very close to 10k. And we can just delete sections of legs. That'll probably work. Figured I'd stop and watch for a bit doing office work, of course. Well, I hope your work's going well. Already at Tuesday. Week's going quick. And there we go. These ones are good. Looks like these here. Dissolve those. And then just this group here. Bam. Thank you everyone for coming by today. I hope you're all having an amazing Tuesday. And if you have any questions about what I'm doing or art related questions, any questions, let me know. I'm just chilling. Boom, boom, boom. go. All right. Good amount finished. Now let's go ahead and do the next important part. Dissolving a lot of these. Can also just delete this whole little tuft, but I won't. Boom. Edge loops that dissolve. Bam. Okay, that one, that one.
exhale. Oh man, my wrist gets so tired after doing the same like hot keys over and over again. <laughs> it's a challenge. Do this one, this one. Nice. Bam, bam, bam. Edge loops. It kind of remind me of the uh, the goo guys from uh, Mass Effect. Help? No, Hanar. No, get some visual overlap here. In my brain. Do you always use a mouse or switch between drawing tablet? Um, so I use a drawing tablet for sculpting. That's my main main use of it. Outside of that, maybe if I'm in Photoshop, I'll use it. Um, but that's that's the main use is, is sculpting. Dude. All right, there we go. Oh, we're super good. 11,279, very close to where we want to be. I think we can get a few more loops out of this one. Really like every other. And then for the legs, I think I'll just go ahead and delete the section hidden by the fluff. Okay. Bye. Um, but most of the time I prefer to use my mouse. Drawing is nice, but after a while you can really mess up your wrist if you're doing it every day. Like you, you don't want to take some precautions um, for, for it. You just want to make sure you're not hurting yourself. Uh, so it, it's surprisingly easy to harm yourself uh, doing drawing and stuff drawing, sculpting, etc. because you're just doing the same thing every day. And it adds up. It really does. Yes, I did hurt myself, Lil. <laughs> Not allowed. Yeah, the, I used to have really bad uh, back pain drawing so often. The moment having a hard time using mouse. It'll take some getting used to. Um, I got a vertical mouse, and uh, that's really helped alleviate a lot of uh, pain in my wrist. Um, they're a little pricey, surprisingly, which is annoying. But I would say it was worth it. 
it does help. Have that too? Gotcha, gotcha. All right, I think we can also delete the chunk of arm that is hidden here. Probably need to just straight up delete some fluff too. Oh, I still need to make sure we got a mirror on. But the drawing tablet hurts the fingers, hurts less the fingers and wrists. Gotcha. You know, I notice I really can't help but push very, very firmly on <laughs> while drawing. <laughs> And uh, I think I could avoid some pain if I <laughs> just ease this stuff on pushing so hard. I'm like, <laughs> that well, I try, but I, I still seem to just <laughs> want, to, want to squish it, I guess. I don't know. Push too hard. Oh, we're so close. So close. <laughs> but the butt's so funny. Okay, um, resolve that too. Then this loop here. And I guess this one. Well, if I can get a, if I can avoid deleting that, I will. So let's let's see if we can. Cause I'd like a little bit more resolution on. The mouth and lips, because we're going to have face tracking, so. I want that to stay. Hmm. I could take my fingers and make them a lot simpler by dissolving the middle of them. That's a pretty significant amount. Do that on the thumb, though. <laughs> so only one big part of the project. Still know what I really want to wait for. So I in order to actually be actually colored or a pale sphere, unlike how clothing for chowder is, but as Era's body. Let me load up the something I did recently for Zinn, the other avatar we'll be working in. And just want to show you what's possible with uh, some shaders, shader magic. So we made this like kind of gel blade for this ax here. Also, here's the full character. He's a neck dragon robot, but um, there's a lot of options for what we can make him look like and what that effect is. Um, but yeah, it's like iridescent, shiny, maybe not quite what you're looking for for your character, but there are a lot of options um, for material properties. Yeah. 
I'm gonna probably get a gif this soon and post it on Twitter. <laughs> Looks dope. Okay, back to Fancy. Yeah, I came out well. I came out well. I feel I'm really happy with it. Especially the iridescence. Looks satisfying. Although oil slick kinda. Hello, draw. Welcome. Hello, hello. Look at my axe. <laughs> Look at it. Behold. That looks awesome. The only reason I'm saying that, as shown in his ref sheet, he is a space born entity. Looks like candy. <laughs> it does look like candy. <laughs> I just wanted to show that there are a variety of effects we can we can make. Oops, wireframe. We're almost there. Almost there. Actually, is eleven k a performance? I thought it was ten k for the longest time. I swear. No, it is 10,000. Poop. I always think that. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe it's not 10K. And then I go check in. Yeah, no, it's, it's 10K. Yeah, we're doing the quest fallback right now. And just, there's stuff I don't want to delete. It gets so much harder. Putting a dough. That's messed up, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to use that metaphor. Um, I'll delete, dissolve this one, I think. So close. Just to get rid of the back of the eyeball and the teeth details. We've gotten them pretty minimized so far. Um, but yeah, teeth are the most egregious. And actually, I didn't have the mirror on, so my count is incorrect. Oh, ton. Perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. It's a little sad, but it needs to be done. <laughs> Dissolving is pretty satisfying. Oh, it is. It is. Okay, I think what we can do is on some of these, the interior, we can just straight up delete a good amount of these back faces. Things that won't be seen, hopefully. Well, I don't know, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Um, it's hard, it's so much fluff, it's hard to know. I don't want to get rid of all of it. Okay, we can simplify the tail a little. And the hoof, the hoof, hoofen. Um, I think we just gotta apply our decimate now. Actually, let's make a file B quest whip nay nay. Okay, apply that to us. But yeah, there's just a bunch of shit in here we can get just delete. I 
this is probably exactly what we'll do to get our count down. Ha, count down. We only have 420 left. We'll select the edge loops, boundary loops, I mean. And I'm just going to delete them. Just going to straight up delete them. Oh, crap. Uh, okay. Just on those ones at first. And then let's apply the decimate here. Pretty well dissolved. There's not much more to do on those ones. Let's check out this guy. This one we can delete. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Only 226 left. So close. So far. All right, let's look at the body one more time. Oh, yeah, here we go. Goodbye, elbow. Bye. Not the elbow. Not my gun rock buttons. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, so close. The tough part is once you've gotten into a state like this, what you're dissolving, you're not really dissolving that much because <laughs> there's so little left. So it gets a little harder to to do it. Do it. It just it deletes it too far. Take a one more pass on the eyelash. Not much more to delete there. I could dissolve this. Horn. Perfect. This is going to be our last hurrah here. I don't want to dissolve that one. Just trying to keep it to retain its shape as much as possible. Okay, we're, we're basically there. Now we can just find some smaller stuff to get rid of. We did 9,994. Yeah. Ugh. My boy. And now we can just go ahead and apply everything, all the mirrors and stuff. Recombine. through and apply all the mirrors. All right. 
This one has a mirror too. Funny. Of course, it's got the eyeball. Let's just review one more time. So select the body, A, control, J. Alrighty. <laughs> and now we can make a move around. The fingernails on this side are not working. Now they're moving. So apply the mirror. Combine. There we go. Okay, nothing's getting left behind. Then we'll click on it one more time, hit mesh, clean up, delete loose. Okay, nothing loose. Do you do fallback versions for every comp? I do not. I charge a, an additional amount for making a fallback because uh, sometimes they can be quite involved. <laughs> sometimes they can be very involved. All right, let's look at the UV editing. That is a mess. That's acceptable. We can get rid of the second UV map. We don't need that. Or better to say we create that. And everything's actually looking pretty good in here. The fluff. Yes. What's usually the hardest part of the process? Uh, usually now, initially when I was first learning, rigging and UV mapping are definitely two of the hardest things to learn for modeling. Um, but now I would say a lot of the VR chat Unity side of things can can be <laughs> headache inducing. If, if someone wants like a, a lot of complicated toggles, like they have an object that they want to do like eight different things with, that really ex can be the hardest thing to test because Unity is not really Everything you make with Avatar Dynamics is kind of a hack. It's not really like... I, I have a big bone to pick with VR chat for, <laughs> for how... It's like they let you do some things, but they don't let you do enough. And uh, enough to make it easy. Anyway. Like all the really complicated things you see people make doing like attaching things to other people and stuff like that it's like that's all just so hunky it's not it's not like a clean system that works nicely it's just messy <laughs> never sure how much to charge for something like a quest or fallback cleanup for one of my models though they usually don't take super duper long yeah it's not it's not terrible um but what i would say is that uh um You definitely just want to give a good estimate. You're like, that's going to take me 20 hours. Multiply that by my hourly rate. And uh, it's usually a good way to, to do it. So what we're going to do here text paint I'm gonna make a, some assignments so we have the body selected right now so make the body the blue selection
or red, I mean. Then select the eye. Paint mask. Green. Assign. Jester Air, I, as a wise Destiny 2 fan once jokingly said, small indie developer company, please understand. <laughs> bam, bam, and paint mask and set. And there we go. Look at our beautiful boy. He's so colorful. And what we're going to do with those... Let's first make another UV map. Hmm, this will be interesting. Right, so we're gonna make a new UV map. Make sure live unwrap is up. Otherwise, it destroy our work. We're gonna take these and hmm. Uh, <laughs> We'll only bake one of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll fit to border all of them. And then we'll put them in this square. So that's that's the square for that. And then here's our eyeball. All right. Some more fluff here. Okay. Now we need to fit everything together. So to start with, I am just going to shrink everything by a little bit. So that way we can keep things relatively organized. Let's put this right here. <laughs> the hand is all separated because <laughs> we cut out a big section of it. Um, put this over here. This could have been so much smaller. Right. Yeah. It's gonna go here. Actually, I want the eye to have a bit more resolution than everything because it looks nice. And there we go. All right, I think that's compact enough. Cool character. Thank you, Jay Dutter. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a good day. We're making a very optimized version of our Minotaur character. Should be the last step we're taking right now. Here's our Minotaur. Minotaur. These look pretty good. Actually, let me show you... Uh, Dutter, indeed. Tis my father. So calm down, everyone. Calm down. Don't. <laughs> Watch. No cursing. <laughs> well, let me check. Let me show you, Dad. Let's show, show you this real quick. Bam. Let's check. 
check this out. So if I do this, Sam is crazy. Just kidding. <laughs> but we've got this here and these here. And now I can turn on face tracking. Check it out. Ah, ooh, ee. Blink, blinky, blinky. <laughs> anyway, very proud of that. It came out very well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I really need to make a video showing this off soon. But I am crazy. You're not wrong. You're not wrong, draw. You are not wrong. Very pleased with how that came. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sky. Thank you. I just can't help but show it off all the time. <laughs> Probably make a whole video showing it off. <laughs> I'm just proud. I'm just proud. And I guess now moving forward, I'll, if I make any base avatars, I will include that with it. Um, what was I doing? Making things. Making things. Pretty much done. Oh, yeah, the uh, baking. My first face tracking comp, first custom from scratch face tracking commission. Other a lot of times I was usually just taking a prefab and then adding it. Um, so it's the first time it's from scratch. Oh, it looks really good. So here's the quest version. It came out pretty well. All the textures and stuff. Nice. All right, what was I doing? <laughs> shading. Yes, shading. So we've already made the assignments for each material. So we can go to the character and get rid of everything. And we're going to make a material called Ebonhorn Quest Baker Diffuse. We'll copy whole body movements. Yes, yes. So uh, they have a, a client has a headset that will track their eyes and mouth and they can move around and do full body movements with the face track and stuff. It'll be quite uh, emotive. <laughs> Makes me want to get a <laughs> face and eye tracking for my VR stuff. Uh. <laughs> Actually, I don't want that. All right, what? See it like that. Need to make sure this is the first UV map. Oh, and then we got UV one up here. This will be our baker. And then this image texture will just go directly into emission. But now is the tricky part. We need to take our attribute of a color attribute here. Are there more opportunities for you with the new Apple VR? It's certainly, I think, generating a lot of excitement. Um, as soon as people figure out how to very cleanly get the Apple VR to work with this kind of stuff, I think so. I think so. I think, I think people will be blown away by VR chat, especially when putting on a uh, viewing it through a uh, app headset. <laughs> Speaking of face tracking, I don't have that. Will you be able to have expressions based on inputs like Nar Dragons, Wicker Beast, Nova Beast, etc.? Yes. Uh, uh, my default commission always includes gesture expressions and then a, a radial expression control as well. Um, because, uh, yeah, 
then your character should, should be able to have expressions. Important stuff. So I'm going to take this and I'll rename this to the body. Sounds good. Bye, Joe. Body, Y, and the uh, fur. Bam. And we'll plug all this in here. Okay. And then we'll open up the body there. Hello. Kind of funny that I'm asked about expressions when Era has a mask in front of his face 99% of the time. Well, I could make the mask have expressions too, if you'd like. I, now I, bam, and fur. Is it fur or fluff? Fluff. So all of this needs to go into here, base color. So we see that now, but it's wrong on certain sections. This is why we brought a mixed color. So we can do something like this. Maybe a bit more like this. Okay, perfect. And then one more mix of the fluff. And one of these should do it. I believe the fluff was blue. Did we give it the right material? Fluff, yeah. Yeah, fluff. Uh, do I swap them? There we go. I'll just. Oh, I see. I plugged in the alpha. That's what happened. I was like, I feel like it's working. There we go. Okay. So now we've got everything set up. Um, and we can go ahead and make our base. So we'll make a new material. We'll call Ebonhorn Quest uh, Albedo Diffuse. Same thing. Albedo and Diffuse. Only 48. Okay. West. And then we just need to make sure we save it down into here, which we'll call Bakes. Might as well hit it with 16. Why not? Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Plato, save. Okay. And then we want to switch to cycles. Turn down our samples to just like one or two. Lurk! I'm gonna make lunch, so I'll be lurking. See you later. Sounds good, draw. Enjoy your lunch. I guess you did enough to drum. Now it's time for food. <laughs> and then bake will be for emissive. And we need to make sure we have this selected. And we need to make sure we have our second UV map selected. Then we can bake. Yes, samples do affect the bake time. The more samples, the more samples, the longer it takes, but generally the more accurate it is when you're rendering stuff like a, like a scene. So when you're like doing an animation or something. But for this, there's no need to sample multiple times because we, we know exactly what we're giving it. You, I could really just put in one sample and it would be fine.
The only thing I'm thinking of having included with the mask is a toggle for normal, normal mask like in rep, tragedy, comedy since it turns into tragedy, and come. Okay, yeah, that'd be really fun. I think I could make our little rig for that. Mentos 3D, I enjoy your stream. Please, I am modeling prop right now for print. Keep going, great job. Thank you, Mentos. I wish you well with your modeling as well. Excited to see what you make. Thank you. Thank you for the good vibes. Huh, this is just a solid color. Funny. I expected a little bit more on the uh, that there, but that's okay. And I think everything big nicely. Let's just test really quick. I'm going to uh, get rid of our material on the character. Make a new one. And this one will just be Ebonhorn Quest. Add in another image texture, but it's just a standard guy. Quest, Albedo. Drop that right there. All right, eye resolution looks pretty good. I'm going to turn down the roughness so I can actually see him. Butt looks good. Legs look good. Everything's feeling pretty strong. All right, save. Um, let's get that one. Go back to our baker. And now, <laughs> We'll bake all the other textures. So I'm going to make a new version of this one and switch it to instead of Baker Diffuse, this will be Baker Normal. Oh, you know what? I think I decided last time that I actually don't want to make um, I'd rather use a Toon Shader for the quest because it just looks so much better. So we're going to just only bake the AO as well. And we'll combine these two maps together. AO. Open this up. Ambient occlusion. There's no ambient occlusion for this. It's just going to be a solid color of white. Then here for AO. So here's our AO map that we're going to bake. Then save, select this, remove it, make a new image, add then horn quest AO. Find those. Uh, one thing I should have pointed out the wings in the ref sheet aren't exactly how I wanted them to be. Once we get to sculpting the toggle wings, I'll send you pictures. So what they are actually supposed to click. Oh, you can go ahead and send those now if you'd like. Um, sculpting is what we'll start with first. So best to, best to send now. All right. And we'll save this here. A O bottom. And we'll bake again. I actually want to see one sample. One should bake super quick then. Bake. Nice. And it did bake very quick. Alrighty. So now I will make a backup copy save and we'll call this version. Oh, uh, let me make sure it's the quest version. We'll call this version the baking. That way we've got that saved. And then we're going to open Photoshop. Photoshop, uh, we also want to export everything for the character right now. And this will be, we're actually going to call it 
nothing, and we'll just say quest transfer. I just need to think about how I bring everything in. That should that should be fine. <laughs> All right, so now we're here. We've got the bakes that we made. And we'll just drop them in, boom, and boom. Enter, control, and we'll save this. We'll save it in the bake folder. We'll say quest tune, okay? And then we'll set our material to overlay. I think just mold. Lighten it a little. Save and then file export PNG into the same folder. Save. Okay. And now we've exported this, so we'll close this version of Unity and we're going to open up our quest version of Unity. Oh, uh. oh, hello, hello of fortune. Welcome hey, uh, to you as well. We're working on our quest version of our character right now. Getting him set up, getting him made. But hello, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Excuse me. So this is basically what he's going to look like in there. All right, there's a quest version of, uh, this is not the quest version. Yeah, that's definitely the PC version, but <laughs> uh, uh, we did make a quest version of character. Are you making normal texture? Um, we've already made the normal textures for our avatar. So right now we're just working on um, getting a tune version. I won't use a normal map for the quest version of this character, uh, but we did make a normal map uh, for him in our other version. And he looks like this. Let's see, I have my full version of the character. I use Substance Painter. It's a little higher quality. Higher quality. And now we've got Evan Horn in here. Pop this open. Open up our FBX file. Show and explore. Copy this path. Go to Blender again. Oops, that was Photoshop I just clicked. And gosh darn it. <laughs> I already have Photoshop open. I don't need another Photoshop. Uh, okay. And then we'll export to here. But I need to make sure this one is Evanhorn Quest. something broke and that's probably because there's a bunch of n-gons in here so we'll select all by faces by side greater than four and then triangulate them based on beauty and then export again Oh, I didn't bake the shape keys, so we need to do that. Um, back to face rigging here. Save. 
big deep shape keys. Loading, 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 loading. Actually, let's check a few things here. In our quest project, I actually do want to include this. And it looks like nothing else needs to be updated, or except for Fury, Fury, Fury. So we baked the shape keys on our quest version, which means we now have got a bunch of expressions and stuff, which are looking super good. Does he have a slight smile? He does. I think that's because we're on this frame. If I go back there and then try again. Okay, everything's looking good. Man, the quest version came out super well. Nothing too obviously breaking. Nice. Proud of that. Okay. Export again. This time it'll take a lot longer. Actually, I'm gonna go to the restroom really quick. I'll be right back. One moment. This is a good good opportunity too. I'm back. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Zoom. Hello. He's being stealthy again. I was, I was hiding. I knew you were coming and I hid under my desk. <laughs> but hello. Welcome. I'm making 
the quest version of our Minotaur in here. Good day to you. Good day to you. Please don't break. Okay. So here's the quest version of Pete, which we need to make a material for. It will be Evan Horn Quest. Oh, balls. I forgot to get rid of. Dang it, I have to export again. Because <laughs> uh, I need to get rid of this map. So it's just this one. And then we go to shading and get rid of this. It'll work. Because it's not going to look right. OK, so export again. Save. Hopefully it didn't take quite as long. But then we can still bring in the material. We're going to use the texture. Bam. I don't even know what the bone layers is used for. It's just purely organization. Um, yeah, organization only. It's like I want all my bones on this layer when I'm in order to find them easier. Oh. Did he import with the material? handy. Just want to say I need to make a new material either way. So just drop that here. Close, but the texture is not included, so I still have to use piece one. Standard VChat Mobile Tune Lit is my favorite. Because it just looks good. Apply. There we go. Nice and richly colored tune shader. Maybe a little too dark, but might be a little too dark for that. That's okay. Maybe just slightly less dark. So I'll open this folder. Open up Photoshop. Now I kind of want to see what I did for Lucas. I use multiply and then I just baked it. Okay, so it's still multiply. How did I make the hair? For the fluff on his arms and legs, I sculpted it. And then I made a retopology. So I, I made a bunch of tufts with like uh, subdivisions. Then I merged those together, I sculpted them to give them like a smooth and look in the way I wanted. Retopology over that. Same with these ones. These ones are just little subdivided chunks. This is not one unit. They're all little separate, separate tufts, which maybe that comes across pretty clearly, but um yeah. But I like how the hair turned out quite a bit. Anyway, here's the simple version. And we can show the difference in count, wireframe, how much simpler it is. So we got that one. And this guy, but they still look relatively similar, which feels good. Sculpting, yes, sculpting is great. Repology, it's, it's my main workflow now. I just can't get enough of it. It's, it's so good. Let's say 50% on this. And then try the overlay. This overlay. Just, I don't know, something a little bit nicer. Multiply's just got, I wish it picked up more of the base color. Really. 
Maybe what I'll do is I'll take the ambient occlusion. I'll copy it. Copy the ambient occlusion. Then we'll take this guy, we'll duplicate him. And we'll set him to overlay. And then we'll mask it. And in the mask, we'll paste the Copy, paste. Maybe I need to invert the mask. Now it is overlaying, but it's overlaying the color, more similar color. I think. <laughs> and still lower it to like 50. 50%. My gosh, I hate when it dings at me. Boom! Yes, I know. And then get that path one more time. Beautiful. Well, thank you. It's coming together. Coming together, coming together. File, export, PNG to right here, overwrite this file. Yes, I do, sorry for it to make sound. Photoshop just loves like screaming at you. It's like, ah, leave me alone, Photoshop. Ah. <laughs> Alrighty. Perfect, so now, what we want to do is we want to set up just a few fizz bones. We can't use as many fizz bones as our other one, but I think I'm going to do the nose ring and the tail. Turn this guy off, set this to zero, zero, and then we'll paste again. Right here, drag that in. No, it's still copy the whole thing. All right. Tail. And nose ring. Because I don't think I'll be able to use much more than that. Um, hydrate. It's coffee count. Hello, Sh Shatter. Welcome. Hello, hello. How you doing? <laughs> Always, always coffee. It's gotta be this one. It's gotta be this one. The icons are huge. Actually, it would look the same because they're in the same position. To me, it counts, lol. Hey there, JW. Welcome. How could how goes your work without coffee? Um, I believe I have so much trouble focusing without some sort of stimulant of some kind. It sounds wildly bigger than it should but <laughs> coffee is great it keeps me focused you know if i wasn't used to drinking coffee regularly i'd not be on that vibe ants or uh, um, some other adhd medication blue coffee counts it is water with grounded beans with those dirty beans in there but they're delicious delicious beans And then we'll save. We also want to capture a copy of component. Paste this here. Oh, fuck that one more time. We love bean water. Nutritious. Nutritious. Actually, I don't know how nutritious coffee is, but it is delicious. Well, the right kind of coffee. I recently just 
got back into coffee because I realized, what? I was just drinking really shitty coffee. No wonder I didn't like it as much. <laughs> but I got these ones from Costco and they're pretty good. Pretty good. Do I ever drink tea? Every now and then. Definitely uh, when I wasn't drinking a lot of coffee, I was drinking a lot more tea. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Not the same, though. So we got to re-export that mesh one more time. Everything else looks amazing. We just need to go back in here. Select our eyeballs. Oh, that's what that section is. Funny, funny. It, it'll be fine. And then go to shape keys, look up, blend from shape. This list is getting too big. Blend from shape right there. Bam. Okay. All right, export again. <clears throat> I don't know how nutritional coffee is. If you saw the stuff I put in my coffee, yeah, no. <laughs> More sugar and milk than bean water. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. How it goes sometimes. I too like my morning milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking tea with coffee and creamer and got hooked. Oh, you know what? That sounds pretty good. Maybe a little oat milk or something. But I really like mint, like a minty tea, like a peppermint or spearmint. Peppermint especially. Spearmint's okay. Peppermint, I really love. Um, or like a chai. Something where it's like a little, it's got a little kick. No. Green tea kind of bores me after a while. Green and black tea just really bores me. Um, all right, he looks awesome. Very good stuff. We need to add one more thing to him. First, the BRC Fury right defaults. <sighs> Got to bounce for now. Just poke me when the project begins. Absolutely, Jester. I definitely will. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch you then. If not, uh, you can always review the live stream to see it come together. Uh, coffee or tea, just as long as I get my caffeine <laughs> injected into my veins. Give it to me. And right, then we can make a prefab for Edmonton Quest. Variant. And now we can test if it works. So we'll go ahead and hit uh, this play. Pull up the live link again. Because the cool thing is the OSC stuff, I believe, carries through all the way to uh, Quest, Quest version. So even the fallback should have some. Uh, doesn't look like it. Um, Hmm. Um, let me try toggling this. Have Ebonhorn, no, it's stuck on the not quest version. So let me open this up again. Hmm. Uh, Let 
interesting. It's not seeing my current avatar. Let me let me toggle this again. Or here, open. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So it's definitely seeing the quest version now, but it's moving. Let me just restart this side of things. Christopher Eubanks, hello. Make Cure Black Super form in VR chat. Is that uh, Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> I but also, hello, Christopher. Welcome. Um, give me, give me, it says that it's seeing it, but it's not animating the character. Oh, do I need to do this again? And bam. No, nothing. Ah, hmm. Bummer. Interesting. Should be working. It's live on this end. Uh, let's double check. If I click on this guy, I say, where is this one? It's using that. And it's right out of the Jerry's template, which is good. Everything's within the Jerry's prefab. <clears throat> so why isn't it? Working here. Um, just double check I have the shape keys. That would be a good place to start. Yes, I do. Look at all those shape keys. Are they doing anything? Oh. Yeah, they're moving it. Oh, uh oh. I'll have to redo the tongue for both of them. Because it should not be moving the jaw at all. The tongue should be moving alone. Maybe, I believe, you know, that may not actually be tracked. Anyway, blend shapes are working, obviously. It sees the character, but maybe the emulator is not. Listening on port 901, sending on port 9000. Right, I need to delete that, then play, then add it. Oh, so many little bugs I have to work around. Open the socket. Opening the side, messages are definitely getting received. Um, it's sending it to the right avatar. But it's not animating. All right, so. I'm saying debug the FX layer. There we go. Now I see these. Okay. And OSC is going. And I lost my gesture. <laughs> um, 
poop. Uh, try one more time. I'm going to try this, even though it's probably not going to work. I really want to start using the FX layer to begin with. That would be preferable. But if I do this, it's probably not going to have the gesture manager, so I can't actually adjust the character. Yep, and it's busted. Fudge. Motherf. Let's try it without this. Tools, enable, turn on, and animate. Nothing. Damn it. Okay, let's look at this really quick. I just want to see. Do I have any of this aliens? things in here. No, I don't see any. Uh, this is a little extra. I don't really need him to be face tracking, but he should have the ability to. One more attempt. Maybe I just need to restart Unity. Unity. Or double check with my other avatar that it's actually working as expected. That's annoying. Floats, synced. None of it's getting hitting the character at all. So it has to be. What's my favorite part of the Abby making process? Definitely the sculpting. Um, most definitely. I think that's where I get to play the most the most uh everything else feels very technical um sculpting can feel technical but it's still a little bit more playful and i, I like that part mm, it's probably Conflicting. Oh no, it sees the quest version. So, yeah, you know, whatever. I'm I'm 100% sure it's working properly. It's the exact same setup. Blend shapes are working, so I'm just gonna go for it. Load it and test. Or I guess that's a good question. Do quest avatars have an OSC? Maybe that's the problem. Quest avatars OSC.
เออวีอาร์แชทโอเอสซีฟอร์ควอสต์อะวาทาร์สเซอร์เซอร์ should be OSC on Quest. Well, it's for that thing. I'm 90% sure. Hello, Fat Ma Mave, Mav. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. We're working on our Quest avatar here, and uh, we're getting it shipped off to the client right now. Shipped off. Now we're gonna copy the ID for Av. Go to here. Paste. Heard you do comms for Abby's sent by Diggy. Oh, well, hello. Yes, indeed, I do commissions. This is a, a commission here. We just made the quest version of uh, this other avatar, which I can pull out here. Right there. And so here's the full original avatar. Uh, and he's got face tracking and all this stuff, and then this is the uh, quest version, uh, fallback version. So, I'm trying to just figure out how that's supposed to work. <laughs> um, builder quest. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think I understand why the face tracking wasn't working. Because it doesn't actually have a rig. Funny. Fine. Bam. So now I'm gonna get rid of the PC version. But yeah, if you're interested in commissions, let me let me send my uh, website your way. Um, mission info right here. So. Uh, And I have a, a portfolio as well, if you don't mind me just spamming you really quick. <laughs> so I have my portfolio here as well. Uh, quite a few different avatars I've made. It's not like these last avatars I've made, or these avatars I've made in the last four months, but there's more that I've made since then that I have yet to upload. I really should. I just get kind of lazy sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> updating portfolios is a lot of fun. Overall performance very poor. Ah, uh, the amount of bones. Bones. But let's see if the things works now. The uh, face tracking. So play. And there's a lot of bones we'll have to get rid of. It'll be easy. Tools. Enable. Ah, well, something happened this time. Oh, the jaws still in the thing. So, okay. So it's gonna look weird, but it should actually work this time. Ah, uh, ooh, yes, there we go. Face track tracking on a quest, Abby. All right, but <laughs> we really need to go to the quest. Rig, configure, uh, head, get rid of that jawbone, body, um, pose, reset, sample, enforce, done, and apply. And we'll try one more time. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Oh. I'm glad I figured that was what the problem was because I was about just getting that PTSD like it's not working. It, I did exactly the same thing. 
Ooh, yes, perfect. Beautiful. I might move the nose ring back a little bit more because it just pokes through completely. Oh. Yeah, suspicious. <laughs> okay, sorry, getting getting into it. Um, yeah, that's good. Everything else looks pretty awesome, though. And we confirmed it's working, so that feels good. Uh, what else? Not too much else to do. Yeah, I think uh, I have to move pretty far back for it to work properly. I think it would be easier to do what I did last time, this other version, where I adjusted the bone animation. I took the face tracking animation. I dropped it on the character and I entered the animator for mouth close, which I believe is the one causing the problem. It looks really weird in here because it's like a negative shape. So it will also just Body, bunch shapes, jaw open, turn that on too, and then I'll also grab the spine. Spine, spine, spine. Nose ring, move it down and back. Maybe even rotate it a little. Beautiful. Then we can delete jaw open. And that should be all we need to do to at least improve it. Try again, play, tools. We're almost done. I'm gonna stick with this until we're done. I'll be going to lunch in just a little while. For anyone new here, I do break my day up into two streams. Two streams, so we'll be finishing the morning one in just a little while, and then moving on to uh, the af to lunch, then the afternoon stream. So if you are new here, definitely hit follow, subscribe, all that jazz, because I'll be back soon, and we'll be continuing to bake Avatar, our, our mech dragon guy. Mech dragon. That's not what I want to have. That happened last time. How do I fix that? I think I did fix it just now. Oh, uh, also get rid of the animator on the character. Tools, emulator enabled, better. Turn on OSC, go to quest, 
bam, 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 bam. And I didn't turn this on yet, so probably didn't work right away. Ooh, okay, perfect. Nice. Yes. Okay, perfect. Ooh, it looks like the nose ring no longer is clipping. All right. So now we've kicked, but... Hmm. That is an issue, though. That actually is an issue, because I need that one animation updated. <laughs> uh, crud. Oh, OK. Um, that's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. What I need to do is take this file, duplicate it, and we're going to take this way out, put it in our own animators here. Hello, Thorn. Hello. Welcome. Then I need to take the Face blend shapes, UE, mouth uh, closed here. Duplicate that, take this out, drop it here. Then in our new the Evan. UE, yes, perfect. We want to go in here. We want to go to mouth closed. Or where would that be? <laughs> mouth. Should be one of these. So then mouth or jaw, something like that. The boy, the pizza is in the oven. <laughs> the pizza in the oven. I'm hungry now that you said that. Jaw open blend. Mouth closed. Mouth closed. We want to replace it with the animation we made. Here, mouth closed, one, or Evan. We just want to drop that right there. All right, then. <laughs> then we need to take this. Oh Lord. Is there a simpler way to do this? What if I could use on the VRC Fury? Right now we're using the fix right defaults, which is fine. Do I have an animation swap? No. Not there at least, but what if Global Collider, blah, blah, blah. No. no. Okay. Darn. Chris, it just gets complicated because I need the nose to move, otherwise it pokes through the face, which is no good. I don't want the other. Ugh.
So that means I need to create another prefab here. And I'm just going to say Evan. And remove from here. And we're going to put into animators here. Okay. Because this one needs to use our this version of the blend shapes <laughs> thing. You'll figure it out, King. <laughs> uh, we're we're on track. We're on track. Um, just that one and this one. We swapped the mouth closed animation. That's good. Desk, it should still work now. Save, play. It's not. Because otherwise, it's not going to actually use the correct animation for the nose ring, and the nose is going to pop through the face. And you know what? I don't want that. I worked too hard for that to be just what happens. <laughs> All right, so the ooh also moves it. And that's fine, because now that we have our custom shape and all that jazz, it'll be very easy to adjust it. So lip funnel is the one we want. Pretty sure. Duplicate it. Evan, lip funnel. And we'll create a full folder here, which we'll call FT edits. Face tracking edits here. Lip funnel, Evan. And then this lip funnel. I want to see how it plays on the character, so we do that. So I can select. Oh, uh, go to the blend shape driver, driver tree, lip funnel. Well. Funnel here. Oh, it's another blend tree. Okay. Here. Okay. Lip funnel. Okay. Which we want to replace with lip funnel Evan. There. So I can go here. A lip. Funnel, Evan, preview. When I try to make a model like the left one, I end up with the one you have in Unity flat and pale. I don't know how to make it work in Blender. Um, so this kind of look here, yeah, we can see it poking through, which is exactly what we wanted to adjust. Uh, the main thing is understanding how materials work. And materials don't carry over from Blender to Unity. You have to create a new material in Unity to take advantage of your um, new engine, the new engine that it's, that it's in. Sorry, that sounds like probably sounds very vague. Uh, 
but basically yeah so the the one on the left you're looking at here that is rendered entirely in blender the one directly above me um but i still do have my pc version of this avatar which is right here and it still looks quite different um, and a lot of that just under, is understanding how to bake things in substance, how to get things looking as you intend, or, to, or at least to make the most of the materials that are available to you. Um, so definitely recommend checking out the Poyom shader for Unity, because it's great. It's got a ton of features, um, and you can really, that's what I use every time, because it just gets the job done. All right. Do we adjust the lips? I think so. Let's go ahead and test one more time. Make sure the nose ring is working properly. And another bad thing about Unity is Unity has terrible lighting, genuinely terrible lighting. Like the default skybox looks like garbage. <laughs> My problem is in Blender, when I change roughness, sheen, metallic, and such, it looks too shiny or becomes like Unity. I can't find the right balance or use of maps. Your main, the main thing that changes how your materials look is lighting. Um, you can have the best materials in the world, and if you put them in a dark room, they're not going to look like anything. Um, so you want to get like skyboxes or HDRI maps that really bring your materials to life and will give you a better insight into how they're uh, performing. Um. Oh, come on. Well. Uh, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's probably because I have two men. Wow. Oh, 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 okay, I see what's happening. All right, so I can't have a second animation there. That's okay. Oh, but now I have to adjust it. So I need to delete that. Go here. Click on this. Click on that. He's controlling the ring with his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see what the ring is doing. Tongue out lip funnel right here. This one's missing because it needs the lip funnel. Here. Oh. So I think we'll have to live with a little bit of clipping. I think as well. Wow. <laughs> you know, it, making sounds, it helps me understand. It helps me understand. forward a little bit just just to help I guess hopefully that makes a difference blah I made an afk animation edit that changes the facial expression but after turning afk on and off I now have the face sticking to the proxy animations huh. Interesting. So it's getting stuck in some sort of animator loop. 
Excuse me. Check your animation, animator uh, logic there. Right. Bones. Thank you. Thank you, Thor. I'm just sneezing it up. Sneezing it up. My cat's yelling at me through the door. This is going to be interesting. Favorite digital art software? Blender. Blender, for sure. Can't get enough Blendy. So now we broke our weight painting. Not on as many as I thought though, which is good. I was worried it would be a lot more than that. Animator logic? Yeah, the uh like how things loop together. It's it sounds like it's getting stuck. It'd be weird because all your animations are separate, right? So why would it be playing those over the other ones? Uh, what is your favorite dish talk? Do you use Blender to make mixtures of fruity drinks? <laughs> you probably could if you if, uh if you were determined enough. My cat's barging into my door. Just tearing the door down. She actually opened it. What are you doing? What are you doing? Bad baby. Bad baby alert. Bad baby alert. Stuck the AFK animation in the default action controller. It has a track set up, so it should should all tracking on accent. Interesting. I'm not familiar with as very as familiar with toggling tracking on certain things. But yes, it is the loaf. Loafalicious. Can't resolve. Messed up. Trying to figure out what to focus on. That's better. My cat looked at my eyeball and I have pink eye low. <laughs> gross. <laughs> That's gross. Our right, medium performance, we need to get rid of another, an additional 20, or, uh, 17 bones. 17 bones. So, what bones can we get rid of? Many extra bones. Seventeen bones. We have the ears. I guess we're not animating the ears, so we might as well do that. Is 
So that's six there. And then for the tail, so we did six. Now we're at 11. It was worth the pain. <laughs> 11 and then the tail. Tail is how many? Right now it's 10. Mm, prefer to see if we can get rid of other bones over the tail. It's quite the tail. Tailicious. I just made the same joke twice. Uh, Brain on autopilot. Oh, what the fuck? Why is the hand in this cap? Or, no, something's attached. It should not be attached there. Do you want to sit in the chair? There you go. Can I speak British? <laughs> nom nom nom. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Interesting. There should not be that much movement. This from the head? Oh, I see. Unlock. Unlock. Okay, well, that's an easy fix, though. Oh, wait, is it a right default issue? Ah, oh, that, could, that could definitely be it. My original FX controller has them all on, but my newly made action controller does not. I definitely prefer having right defaults on I feel that it's a little bit easier to understand. Don't quite understand that. Because then it's like, however, the default is whatever I leave it at before I animate. <laughs> that makes more sense to me. I export again. The dogs are growing. They're looking at me. Oi, mate. We should... Don't new weight you guat yourself into. <laughs> guat. What you guat yourself into. <laughs> the grossest way to say God. Should they be on or off? I had a stream hiccup when you said, I prefer having right defaults on. Yeah. 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 All right, we made it. We made it to good. Good brain. So now we can upload the avatar. Can we see the loaf? Loaf cam. Loaf cam. <laughs> Loaf Sasquatch found footage, aka Luxorip. All right, so now we've done all these adjustments to the quest version, which will apply all. We also need to make similar changes to the PC version. So we'll drag that out. The PC version can no longer use this one. It has to use 
this one here. The bottom one. And I think I think that's the only change that's required. But we do need a test, so we'll also do another play. Open up the live link. Do the facial tracking. <laughs> Again and again and again. Oh, beautiful. Okay, okay. Uh, that means I have to test it, that in uh, in the other Unity project. Oh, okay, so <laughs> uh, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna make. Uh, Ebonhorn PC upload. Uh, duplicate that and we'll make a quest upload. Right now we're in the PC upload scene, so I'll delete the quest out of here. Quest version, and we'll go to the quest upload. And I'll delete the PC version out. Save. All right. And let's actually upload our P or quest version, questy version. And bam, build and publish. Actually, cancel. cancel. I realize that for here. On the shape keys, select the body, or actually select tongue. Where is the tongue? Is that the tongue? Where's my tongue? This is my tongue right there. Invert, and then my last shape keys for the tongue. We want to do blend from shape. We need to do that for our C version as well. Uh, are there any Blender slash Unity add-ons for default human poses? Rigify, rigify. Are you referring to like animation stuff or, well, either way, rigify is definitely uh, one you want to use. And I believe it's built in. Edit preferences, rigify uh, here. So it's, it's built, it's in the one of the default add-ons. Animation. Um, I'm sure there's some out there for sure, but you kind of have to, uh, there's there's a decent amount to animations. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar looking up dynamic like animation packs. So but that's basically what you'd want to do. You want to look up animation packs and use them. I'm just gonna do one final check of the quest version. I'm gonna rig, configure muscles. I just want to move them around, make sure everything's working. All right. So also have dynamic poses. Rigify is the rigs you use to create a character, like create a character control rig. So the animate, connect the mesh to the bones and then move them around. But because it's very commonly used, you could probably find a lot of animations for Rigify rigs out there. But many times animations are rig specific. Like, uh, 
people set up skeletons in very different ways. So not everything is like one to one, unfortunately. All right, we know the quest is working. We can go ahead and upload that. Bam. Build and publish. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of a vague thing to say, but. All right, so now Ebonhorn in quest is done. We'll get him back over to the PC version. So export again, Ebonhorn, quest transfer, quest transfer back to <laughs> PC version. <laughs> What a name, what a name. Okay, now we have to close this version of Unity, open up our previous version. We can save this guy, a quest version, make a backup copy, quest. Uh, say final draft, save. Perfect. Close that. Open up the PC version. And in our PC version, we have to do what we did on the other character, which is go down, mouth, smile, um, or no, all the tongue shapes. We need to select the tongue, invert that selection, and for every one of these, blend from shape. I really need to find a way to do this when I'm baking. Okay. Awesome. Here, import our quest version. This will update the prefab. Everything's already backed up, so we we do have everything backed up. Good. Adhorn VRC. Yes, we've got these folder and that animation is new. This is new. Um, these scenes are new or changing. Perfect. Da, da, da. Import. Perfect. Okay. So now. Need to adjust which scene we have because we're in a scene that doesn't exist anymore. Okay, perfect. Save. Then back to Blender. Now we're in for the long export. It's unfortunate it takes so long to export all this, but we gotta do it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, so now we just chill for a little bit. We're just waiting for this to load. Then we're good. But now 
I'm not relying on incorrectly assigned animations. Should be good. You seem very outgoing, but you are quite the opposite. <laughs> I'm. I yeah, I have been pondering that. It's like. I think I, I whether this is a blessing or a curse, I don't have. I have hyper interests. <laughs> it's like, I don't really particularly care to go out because then I I can't. I'm not meeting people that like the things that I like or do the things that I do, or you know, it's like I want to engage. I want to push my interests. I want to be growing my abilities, and so uh, I think I mostly end up working on my computer because that's where. <laughs> I get to do those things <laughs> for better or worse. Oops, I opened Photoshop again. But that being said, I I think I'm like, I don't know, people toss around extrovert, introvert and stuff. It's like I'm extroverted in the sense that I like interacting with people, but I'm introverted, introverted in the sense that I really like inter interacting with people about specific things. <laughs> my, my social life is defined by my interests, not by my desire to hang out with people. <laughs> also, Moo! Hello, Evan. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're just putting the final touches on everything right now. MBTI, not familiar with that. Not familiar with that. And also, but just after years of working terrible customer service jobs, I think my ability to just interact casually with people is still recovering. <laughs> Being on the receiving end of people's frustration and anger for like years and years and years, like really just ate at me. Are there any artists that really inspired you? Yes, there's 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 so many. I really love I felt that one in your way. Yeah. The 16 personality. Oh, um I INFJ. Yeah, Myers Briggs. INFJ. Um I really Grew up on Dragon Ball Z, so Akira, Akira Toriyama started my love of art, I would say. Action-packed art. Um, trying to think. There's, there's so many. I like, uh, it's, it's hard to narrow it down to like just a few. Uh, I, th I would say Geiger, H.R. Geiger, big inspiration. Um, is it H.R. Geiger? Uh, Akira Toriyama. Um, the guy who did Akira. I forget his name. Um, Otomo. I believe it's Otomo something. He's awesome. Um, Uh, Worthy Kids, I think, is really, really amazing. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's like an animator. Uh, mm -hmm. um, looked around for a second. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yes, everything's working as expected. So we are done. <laughs> I created my taste in men. <laughs> well, it's good to know what inspired you. <laughs> Certainly there's a lot of good manga out there. Uh, definitely just like manga in general, huge inspirations. Um, I'll make a, little, a list at some point because I'd like to quantify that myself on who, who I found inspiring. Um, 
can be a little bit more specific with that. But my my tw my X feed, my Twitter feed is basically just all artists. Like it's just art. I follow like close to six thousand people. I would follow more than five thousand people if I could, because I just pretty much if I see someone I like uh, making art, I like immediate follow. Berserk is one big one for me. I have yet to read that because I know it's going to make me sad. <laughs> yeah, I have a really hard time reading things I know that will make me very sad. Um, oh, I needed to remove the pipeline managers. I generally read Yaoi slash Yuri and Bara. Isn't Bara Yaoi? <laughs> Sam now has a Minotaur VTuber for streams. Also, hello, hello, Rashad Z. Welcome, welcome. Uh, troubling, yes, lol. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I I like look forward to it, but then I also, to reading it, it's like nice to know I have like a big work that's good and like people like a lot, but also I'm hesitant to, to do it. Bara is Yaoi, but the men engage more frequently. <laughs> it's less, uh, uh, teenage romance. <laughs> All right, I think we've got everything ready to go now. The avatars are applied for the prefabs. We have a quest now. That was the prefab, that was the scene. Seems good to go. Okay, perfect. One more time, export. There's more on the sentimental romantic stuff, while on the other hand, bar is more of, yeah. <laughs> Leather daddy gimps. Yeah. I think, uh... What kind of shaders are you using? <laughs> it looks better than default ones you get with the pipelines or standard materials. I cannot recommend the Poyomi material. Uh, it is free. It kind of targets the VR chat uh, category. We have a free MIT licensed one, so you can use it in your projects as long as you credit them. Um, and I'll spell that deep stream here. Poyomi shader. Uh, P O I Y L M. -I. Sorry, one second, guys. I'm getting a call. Oh, hey. What's up, Burnaby? All right, I'm back, I'm back. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, so Poyomi Shader is fantastic and they have a, some documentation available online as well for like how to set up materials and things like that. Um, and let me go ahead and start this upload for Eben. And, uh, and then I'll call it for the morning stream. But I'll show you something I made in the Poyomi Shader recently just to show you how Kind of open-ended and freeform. Uh, it is. Hello, Lily VTuber Zero. Welcome. You're good, doing good today. I am. I am. We're just about to end the morning stream for today, but I'm doing cool. Uh, but yeah. So I made this guy yesterday. So this is the quest version, which is just tune lit, just a standard shader, and then we also have the PC version which is, uh, oops, I keep opening the prefab, not the uh, scene. Um, but yeah, so this guy looks quite good. 
I also have changed here lighting. Here to relax though, just been tired off work. Well, I hope you have a relaxing day then. Uh, definitely good to chillax and relax. And then lastly, Rashad, we've got this guy. So he's also Poyomi Shader. He looks very toy-like, so we're trying to get him like car paint look. But look at the axe. Look at the axe. And this is all in the Poyomi Shader. It's all the same shader, actually. It's not a separate shader. Because uh, you can like ma mask out certain sections and stuff like that. Uh, and then they have this ways to uh, distort UV mapping and things like that. Very cool. Also, a creative director. Well, that's awesome. And thank you. Nice to meet you, Vermont. Yeah, this is a commission for a client of mine. Um, well, they're all commissions. I rarely work on stuff for myself on stream. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, you did catch me right at the end of my stream, Lily. So, <laughs> of the first streams, I will be back in about an hour. Uh, I'm just going to be going on lunch. Um, but uh, I could see forever in the axe. <laughs> There's a drastic difference between the two. I do like the shading in the mobile tune version, but the outline of first shine makes a PC one stand out. It does. It really does. And that's, but that's how much variability you have. So uh, it's, it, it comes together quite well. Uh, and if you ever have any questions about how to set it up, let me know. Maybe I'll do a tutorial sometime soon. Uh, but it is time for me to go on lunch. Warren, thank you. I will enjoy my lunch. But we hope to catch you soon. Definitely hit that follow or subscribe because I will be back very soon. And uh, everyone else, thank you all for hanging out with me this morning. Good Tuesday morning, Evan. I'll catch you later. The upload should be done about now. Um, so you should have the newest version with the Quest avatar um, and the PC version in there. All the face tracking has been done. Ears are touchable. <laughs> uh, but Arctic, Rashad, JW, Sky, Gamer, thank you all for hanging out. Lily, I'll catch you soon. As you know, graphic designing, why don't you apply yourself? I do commissions full time. So uh, I am definitely applying myself to uh, VR models. But anyway, I will catch you all very soon in about an hour. See you then. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.